All right, it's time. Another week. DTGD Radio. This is episode 790. For April Fool's Day, 2024. We're recording this on Easter. There's a rabbit. Yep. The rabbit has risen. It's not ominous at all. <laughs> Did you see? I saw the Ghostbusters picture on Twitter, and I'm like, that's sacrilegious, but kind of funny. Or the Ghostbusters Jesus are... Jesus being captured? Yeah, being captured by the Ghostbusters. Yeah. It's still not as tasteless as uh, as the um, other Ghostbusters catching uh, Harold Ramis' ghost. That's fucked up. Like, don't, don't do that. That's fucked up. Of course, I say that, but it's okay to do Jesus. Whatever, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember, rem- I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna break down like how to not get canceled. You know all the shitty jokes that you're gonna tell, because and and if you're like thinking to yourself, I don't have any shitty jokes. You do be more aware of it. Uh, you know, you you save that for certain people, like. I send Drew weird shit because Drew seems to love weird shit. You know what I mean? You got to know who your, your audience is. Just putting shit out on the internet is a dangerous, dangerous thing. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you just keep jokes in the privacy of your own home. You know, it's fine. Yeah. You no, know, you don't have to share that with everybody. I mean, if they're, you know, really awful, maybe reevaluate. But, like, <laughs> I, I, send, I send funny th- videos of people getting hurt. Those people are in physical pain, but I enjoy them. Yeah, that's the thing. Especially yeah. if there's stu- people doing stupid shit. Those, those are my favorite. Where it's like, oh, ah, this guy's gonna get hurt. Oh, I have no karma came quick. I have no qualms about about laughing at people, stupid people getting hurt. But I mean, it is, but it's still it's still shitty. It's still shitty because I bet they learn. You know, uh, some of them probably did. Do, do you know? I wouldn't want all my mistakes, you know, recorded. I mean, <sighs> and then laughed at on the internet. I got this podcast; it's close enough. Yes, it says. I mean, I, I sit and think about that sometimes. Like, there's like what, probably years of my voice just floating on the internet. I mean, there's years of my voice. That's scary. Yeah, like somebody could take that and create an uh, AI. I mean, but... hours wise, no, but okay, that's what you probably meant was like hours wise. Yeah, just just floating out there in the ether. That's a lot of voice. <laughs> That's a lot of voice. And somebody's gonna make an AI character of me, that, and nobody wants that. Yeah, nobody's nobody's interested in that. No. Nah. Um. All right. So, video games. Yeah, I'm trying. I am having a hard time. Yeah, I we're we're both going through a rut. I don't know what it is. Like, I finished. What was the last game I, I finished? Did. I think was was Alone in the Dark. And it, and it was simple, it was short, it was sweet. And now I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I started Dragon's Dogma, and, like, it just overwhelmed me. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I have the week off. What the fuck am I going to do with my time? Yeah, it's like, always oh, the worst when you take a, a video game. take a vacation and you don't feel like playing video games. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've done other stuff, but, like, in Canada, at least in Ontario anyways... <laughs> It's a long day. It's a long weekend too because we had Friday off. I'm only into Sunday. I, I got seven fucking more days of this. <laughs> <laughs> it might be time for like what a project. A what a... Yeah, I don't know what. And but that's what I was thinking. I was thinking like a really good RPG or something. I need something, but that is the perfect amount of interactivity. I know that sounds weird, but it's like Yakuza is too much. The action gameplay of Yakuza Kiwami 2, I cannot do. Um, it either has to be like mindless action or I, I don't know. I don't know. Nothing's clicking. Nothing is clicking. And I mean, I, I'm enjoying video games, but I'm not loving video games right now, which is annoying. Yeah. Um, so, like, I started, I, I started, I talked about this last week, I started uh, Wonder Boy in Monster World, the Genesis game, um, inside the Wonder Boy collection. I was playing that, and, I mean, it, it's still great. I still love that game. Honestly, that's the game that I'd recommend to people if they want to get into one of them, because it's the most like Zelda. 
Uh, it's got puzzles in the dungeons. Um, it's not like Bill Cosby. You, you though, like, it's got the puzzles, and puzzles the dungeons. in the dungeons. <laughs> And the poor Jello. Don't poor ask. I, yeah, I gonna, don't don't ask what's in the drink. Um, <laughs> what do you mean the drink is cloudy? Like my left eye. Uh, oh, that's bah! Um, I I have no sympathy for him. Speaking of jokes that I don't, you know. Oh no, you could tell all the Bill Cosby jokes. Like those are just those are fair game. I just I yeah. I mean, you kind of um, and it's a known fact. Like it's even if you deny some of them. Um, there's proof he's settled in the past with people. Um, I guess it was a kind of a known secret that just Cannibal Burris <laughs> blurted out. That seems to be show. that seems to be. Anyways, the, video games. Yeah, the thing of the internet nowadays is like most of these people are kind of shitty. It's just now being found out. It's crazy, and it's weird. So okay, so I, I guess because we're talking about it, um, comic artists I like uh, did some really adult comics like very um grotesque and uh violent and i thought it was because like um i'm not gonna say the the title because i don't want to give this person any press um but i just had to deal with finding out that that guy is actually a creep um now he's not murdering people like his comics but like you know don't don't hit on children. <laughs> yeah, that's always, that always seems uh, to be like, like a pretty, one of them. pretty easy. Like we're we're having this big talk right now, I guess in in the culture. Even though I'm not on the line as much, as, but like the whole Nickelodeon documentary, we talked about this before the show last week. Like, mm-hmm. um, I I don't get it. Like I just don't understand um any of it like mm-hmm. i just don't get why somebody would like one just don't do it it's wrong and two like so blatantly like do you not think someone's going to say something but i guess they didn't not for a long ass time know. you know what it's if... fucking it's fucking wild like I, I don't know the whole thing it's shitty to find out that people and and Right now, I feel bad for all the other Nickelodeon stars that have to come out and be like, I didn't have this experience, or, you know, I'm sorry for the people that did. Like, I'm not denying it. Like, there, there's so many people, like Keenan, who uh, is most known for his SNL time now, like, having to come out. And, like, I did, we did eventually with this comic book creator, um, his sort of partner in, um, in, like, one of the things they did was a podcast. His partner recently came out and was like, yeah, so, like, after some uh, very rough uh, uh, news coming out, uh, I'm not t- talking to this person anymore. Um, I don't know. Just fucking... People wow, are weird, you man. This? Oh, the Bill Cosby thing. That, that's what fucking sent us down. <laughs> I don't like Predators. There. Problem solved. Back to the video games. Yeah, like, I, um, y'all are fucked up. I don't know. I, it's... It's shitty to find out that someone you gave the benefit of the doubt to, which I think we do for most people, right? We try to be, yeah. End up betraying your trust. Um, I worry about betraying my trust, tr- people's trust, and I'm not even doing shit like that. <laughs> like, how do you? Uh, sorry, it's just it's been on my mind because it's all the news wants to talk about in my fucking field. Um, like, I don't go onto Twitter, so this is the shit that's been boiling on, like, Reddit. <sighs> um, yeah, so, uh, speaking of taking down criminals, uh, <laughs> I've played War... Show? What? It, it, <laughs> wow, no, 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 I was gonna say, uh, I didn't even see that. Man! What I is just... this? Maybe, maybe we should yeah. scrap this, Ken. <laughs> Holy shit. Nah, that was good shit. That was funny. Uh, all right. But I, seriously, um, Warhammer 40k. How did we go from uh, Monster it. Boy to Warhammer 40k? I'm so because confused. You made, you, okay, so you, I'm talking about the games I was playing. You brought up Bill Cosby. We went down a rabbit hole there. <laughs> I tried to segue out of it, and then you tried to pull a racism card on me. You asshole. It, no, that wasn't it, me. It, that was Warhammer him. Warhammer 40k? What just happened? What? So, so hold on. Let me explain. This is what you get for being because... late, you son of a bitch. Warhammer 40k, so. Necromunda, 
hired gun is all about <laughs> taking down criminals. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're Maybe. not a good person either, because there's no good people in Warhammer 40k. But, there really isn't. There really isn't. But, but you're taking down people in, like, these weird space slums. That game was... It's fucking wild. Weird. It's weird, because yeah. it's Doom 2016 mixed with, like... You can essentially fly in that game. Like, you, you feel like you don't ever touch the ground when you're, like, running and shit. Yeah, and shooting at guys. I need to I need to go back to it because I played it when it first came out and I know it got a bunch of updates because it was it was fucked it wasn't up at bad, all the yeah, all the games was are up. like yeah that studio so, the same studio that did I Divine Cybermancy which is clearly inspired by Warhammer 40k mm. um and that game is like a wild sort of janky mess on Source Engine. And then they got the rights to Warhammer and did Space Hulk Deathwing. Is that the first person one? Man, you uh, you're gonna ask me what a Warhammer game I'm is? Asking, and it don't I'm fucking asking matter. Terrence, I, Terrence would yes, know better. I, I, it is. I, that's that because that's the one I have not played. Um, that's heard, that's like, this studio as well. Okay. Okay. Um. So I uh I played a bit of that. Um, man, you got that on Xbox? Is that co-op? No, that one's not co-op, but the other one is. Deathwing is. Oh, okay. okay. So we might have to look into that. Yeah. Because uh, I, I will absolutely go full um, uh, Space Hulk. Y'all that motherfuckers just need to go back to play. Yeah, Space Hulk on the 3DO. Let's go. Oh, God. That's actually it's not a terrible game, but like it's. It, why would you play for, the 3DO for the three D O? That game looks amazing. I mean, those games look pretty good. Anyways, I have the, I have the second one on Saturn. Mm, yes, yes. Um, I think it's the second one. I don't know if they were both put on. I have one of them for Saturn. Um, yeah, the three D O got the one. There's a couple on PlayStation, but yeah, I think so. The so the thing. The thing that is like, there's two different types of space Hulk games. There's the tactical from like up above, which is how you would play the board game because that's what this was originally. And then you have the first person tactical shooters. And Deathwing is sort of like, what if we took the tactics out? But you can play multiplayer in it. So again, we'll have to look into that. Um, I booted up Crisis because I finally bought bought the HD versions or whatever you want to call them. Mm. Man, I fucking hate the beginning of Crisis. It, any game that starts you in the fucking dark. Like, I get it. I got night vision. It sucks. I don't want to play green video games. Like, the, the color, just green. Crisis was a weird game. I need. I want to play two and three mostly, and I want those to look better than the PS3 version. Three is just boring. I'm sorry, it's just boring. I just want to shoot things mindlessly. That's what I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, but right? it's just so boring. Like two is great, but three is just. I don't know, man. It got so boring. Man, speaking of boring, Princess Peach. Yeah, that game's pretty boring. <laughs> uh, I went back to it. Look, here's the thing. It's it's boring for a Nintendo game. If yeah, this wasn't okay, Nintendo, you would probably go, this is a pretty decent indie game. Mm-hmm. But it's not. And and this isn't even up to the, the standards of good feel, in my opinion, which is the developers that made it. Because they made Kirby's Epic Yarn. Um, oh, God. Yoshi's Woolly World. Yoshi's Crafted World. Like, those are all really great games. Um, there's no reason why this couldn't have been great, too. Um, and I liked the theme. I liked the idea. Um, I just don't. Wait, wait, I don't fun. like the fact. Yeah, like it's just there's something missing that where it's like you'll have fun in one stage and then it'll be like. You'll go and play another and you'll just be like, why am I doing this? I think I think it would have been better paced if instead of floors, all of the. um Maybe you had to do the first four originally, and then it opened up the rest of the theater. And then, as you finished the show, it, the next the next play in the series would take its spot. 
Like that would be a better system because I don't like, I don't want to play certain styles of peach or I want to do it all at the same time. Like I don't, there's a figure skating level. It plays really? like a figure skating game. I, I what, what am I supposed to say to that? Like that's a really weird thing. It's fine. It's, it's gotta fine. be better than um, Winter Games on the NES figure skating. Yeah, but it's not. It doesn't feel as good oh, as Lord. It Takes Two, which has a really good ice level. Man, everything in It Takes Two is top tier. Yeah, I mean, we can't compare know. games to that. But like... it, 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 they need to make a collectathon. They need to make a Mario like game v- using all the things that they did in It Takes Two because the swimming mechanics in that game are the best swimming mechanics I've ever played. Dude, every level in that game is like a fucking There was a couple park where ride, I was like... And it's so fun. I was like not as... I wasn't like the tree level I didn't have as much fun in. Man, the Street Fighter fight with the chipmunk? Come on. No, that's fun, but that's at the end. I know. And I, I, I like the, the mechanic plane. of the two guns. I wasn't the one... Was I the one combating? Who fights? Who fights the squirrel? The girl again? fights the squirrel. Oh, then I did do it. Okay. Yeah. To say, I know I did one where I was not the person that was interesting, and I was like, "Oh, God, I want to play that game again." It's it makes it's me sad that like you have to play it with somebody else. Like I would love to. It's just, just it's just mechanically, I want to see these mechanics outside of that game. Uh, Princess Peach needed those mechanics, in my opinion. And again, I don't hate it. I don't hate this game. I think it's just so mid. Like. I've never seen that amount of mid come from Nintendo. <laughs> I'm, I'm, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Like, like Glory of Heracles, maybe. Like there are maybe. games I don't like, but they're not mid. They're exactly. I don't like um, Fire Emblem's not my jam. Like Fire Emblem's not, it's not my jam. It's not mid. It's a great game. But yeah, they're oh, fantastic yeah, games. Um, I haven't played enough of them. I, I just my thing was it's a little bit more complicated than Advance Wars, and I liked Advance Wars more. That's a hard. That was a hard it jump for me to take. Yep. I um, got you. I got you. But I do have some Fire Emblem games on the 3DS that I need to play. I bought them on clearance, and I was like, yeah, sure, why not? It, the one that's a remake of some old Famicom game that's in 3D. I, I have that one. Even the last um, Peach game wasn't bad. What was it the three? Uh, three it DS was game? interesting. You no, know, it was a DS game that was DS, super okay. Peach, and like. <clears throat> Yeah, it felt more like a Kirby throwaway game to some extent, but it was still fun because there were still really interesting ideas. This feels like I don't, I don't even know, man. Like I was gonna say WarioWare if you took those games and stretched them out way too long. Yeah, like, remember when Treasure feels... made a WarioWare game or a Wario game? War- that's a fucking bizarre where he goes, nah, 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 and he's for an punching hour. fucking dinosaurs and shit. Well, no, but he does that on the pause screen. He goes, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. And then if you wait an hour, he goes, sorry. And then it's silent the rest of the time. <laughs> like, why is that there? I don't know. Who figured that out? Right? Um, like, wow. I don't know if it was data mining or somebody figured it out, but yeah. Um, That's crazy. But that game is wild. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. There's just this weird, like, people criticize Star Fox Adventures. That game is great. Like, that game I is never great. Played that. It's a Zelda like game. Yeah, it's like, it's like Ocarina of Time style Star Fox a, game. It's rare taking on Zelda and then having to add Star Fox into it because Nintendo wanted that. Um, I don't know. There's just there's this weird thing with the Princess Peach game where I'm like, I don't know who this is for because some of the stuff is more difficult than I think most kids would be able to grasp. Like, I don't know. The whole fucking thing is just kind of like, why does this game exist? I mean, I bought it, so I guess that's why. I was going to say, a lot of people bought it, so... Yeah, no. this this is more this is this is the game though finally where it's like oh Nintendo is like shutting this system down oh 100 percent this game is like, like an end of the system life like we ain't got get, the big boys left there's two types of games there's the hidden gems that come out like Dylan's um it's not Dylan's rolling western Dylan's dead heat breakers on the 3ds like that was like a oh this game's really good um and then there was, oh man, there was other 3D, uh, like WarioWare Gold was fantastic as well. But then there was like the Luigi's Mansion remake, which is ironic because there's a Luigi's Mansion remake coming. Um, yeah. But it was like, 
okay. This wasn't built for this console. That's very, very quickly you realize that. Um, I don't know. Just there's just this weirdness to it. And I did play Pepper Grinder. Mm, yes. Which is a very good game, but I don't like the boss battles at all. I think it's weird that we have to have the conversation of if your game is like skill based platforming of any sort, don't add combat into it. Um, there's a reason why Mario enemies take like a total of three hits to defeat like all the bosses and everything. And that's because like, that's not the main focus of the game. Um, Bowser originally took one hit, you know, um, you just had to get the axe. Uh, you could defeat with yep. fireballs, I suppose. But um, you could use so, fireballs. But like, there is a boss battle in. So the first boss battle in Pepper Grinder is is exactly what I'm saying, um, and I'll explain the game after. But um, you'll understand as I explain the mechanics of the game why I don't like the boss battles. The second boss battle, you don't even have to use the 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 dig mechanic that's in the game. You can just stand on the platforms and hit the boss in the face. I feel like it was a fuck you to the player to some extent because like the whole time the game is kind of teaching you to stay in the dirt um, or or the ground or snow or whatever. Um, And then that boss battle says, no, you shouldn't do that. Um, I guess spoiler for that boss battle, but like I just I was irritated by the amount of times I had to do that to figure it out. Um, And it wasn't really a puzzle. Um, the third boss battle is against someone that can do a lot of things you can do and it is impossible and it's purely because the health pool on the enemy is is like a Dark Souls sort of boss fight sort of health pool um, and I say that not because it's like Dark Souls or shit it's, it's just difficult um, but I'm saying that is like it takes a lot of hits you don't you pluck away at Dark Souls bosses um, you don't just walk up. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody that can, but you don't just walk up and one hit the boss generally. And you can't do that with this, but there's no puzzle to solve either. It's kind of just don't get hit, hit back. And it is impossible. I can't fight. I spent over an hour trying to beat this boss. I've done everything I possibly fucking can. Um, like trying to notice that like oh when the that boss starts digging i pop out of the ground right away but like no matter what i end up getting caught because the whole system the whole main game of the pepper grinder is a platformer so stages move left to right up or down um you know it's standard affair but with pepper grinder which is the drill um pulls her along so you always have momentum. So you basically you're just steering. It's a lot like Echo the Dolphin, which is even mentioned on a Wikipedia page, which you should never have Echo the Dolphin <laughs> in your Wikipedia information. But um, think sort of like that. She moves like she's swimming rather than she's digging through dirt. Um, it is not as unwieldy as I thought it would be. Um, the platforming is sort of based upon knowing when to jump out of the dirt. And you you do these really cool things. It's really hard to explain, but like in one level in the second world, you're climbing up a lava area. And as long as you're in the dirt, the lava doesn't hurt you. And so they built platforming around that. And it's a very interesting momentum based platformer. I I don't can't think of too many games that are like that. And they've got, of course, like five hidden coins in every stage. Um But the enemies in the level are just obstacles. You can basically avoid fighting any of them. So when I have to stop my progress through the story to fight a boss, which by the way, has an intro sequence. That is like you getting to where the boss arena eventually is. Now, you don't have to do that if you fail fighting the boss, but you can buy extra health. So if you buy extra health, but lose it on that first part of the um, the stage, now you're back to your normal health at the boss fight. Like, it just... 
this that wasn't why I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the game because it was momentum based platforming that hid these coins extremely well. They they require some really good skill in managing how to move through the dirt and jumping and platforming. Um, that I feel like I could get to if I just tried more. But I was trying to beat the game um, for review, and I I'll be honest, I didn't. I have played uh, three out of four worlds and just not beaten the boss of the third world. Um, the the mechanics aren't changing. Um, I know that. But um, I can't get past this fucking boss. And I actually docked its score. Because honestly, I said to Ken when I started this game, this is like game of the year contender stuff. Um, but the bosses, outside of the first one, which I accepted as just fine, um, it's... <sighs> It's just not nowhere near as fun. I, I, it's not fun to bash your head against the wall when it's not a puzzle. There's no puzzle. There's no solving this. I know exactly where I'm getting caught up, but it's extremely hard not to end up in the situation. So the other character can drill, and you're in a small arena, and if you get caught between them and the wall, you're basically taking a hit, no matter what. And it's like, well, that's because this game isn't built around this. Um, I really like one part of Pepper Grinder, and the other part can fucking fuck right off. Um, and I, it's kind of sad because, like, I saw a bunch of people, and I'm hoping that like they enjoyed the game in the end. Um, but a lot of people talking about the demo. I don't think the demo included a boss. And if it did, it would have been the first boss, and that is not a very good representation of the other bosses in the game. So I, it just, I don't know. There's something about that game where it's like, I love one portion of it while I'm playing it. And then as soon as I got to boss for battles, I was like, I'm not having a good time. <laughs> Straight up not having a good time. Um, so does this present like that Mickey Mouse game where it's like <laughs> the puzzle jumping stuff with no combat, but then they was like, hey, you know what? You will be cool in that game. Combat. And then they put it in Pepper Grinder. Like, is that um, I know you like that that game, that Mickey Mouse game. Is I think you did. Uh, are, we you talking, like are we talking uh, Castle Evolution? No, 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 no. The the one that just came out on Switch not too long ago that was it didn't have combat, but it was like about platforming. Let's talk about the, the, oh, oh, the Illusion, La La yeah, Studios Illusion game. Island. Illusion Island. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that game. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the, yeah, I was. It just sounded no, like you was talking so, like so. so... <sighs> Pepper Grinder is unique because that 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 drilling mechanic is like swimming, and I can't think of a game where you swim through water in the air and sort of dolphin kick your way out of it into other bubbles of water that are floating in the air type of thing. Like that's where this this game gets really kind of crazy. You did um, that shit in Atomic Heart, remember? Man, you're asking me That's to remember right. fucking Atomic yeah. Heart. All I remember is getting my ass handed to me by fucking um, <laughs> mannequins. Yeah, that combat that game. Critters. Was... Shut the fuck up. I got that your was not, that was not great. Let I me go level area. up with the, the, with the vending machine that fridge. wants to fuck you. Yeah, the horny fridge. Yeah, Jesus. fridge. That's what it was. Um, yeah. Ugh. Um... No, so so the boss battles still you're still controlling Pepper, so she plays the same. It's just it shows that like oh these these levels that they built around this mechanic are far more refined and clearly take into account that yeah this is a bit unwieldy at the end of the day because you don't have precision control over her. Uh. And it, those those faults weren't thought of in boss battles. Like a better example is Sonic. Sonic boss battles are not generally difficult. Um, they just require some platforming, right? It, but it, the game slows down to a crawl. Um, so imagine that, but instead of just a couple hits, like say three or four, it's like you just have to twenty plus. Like, 20 plus. Like, can you imagine if a Sonic game asked you to hit the boss 20 times? Man, it's like fighting in Mario game. Dragon's Dogma where you gotta, like, they got, like, four health bars. 
Oh my it, god, yeah. With the pips underneath, you're yeah. like, oh, we're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I... It, it's that. that That's the problem. Like, again, I, I even say to my review, like, if you just decrease the health pool of the bosses, this game becomes... Like, I'm not even saying massively. Like, the, the boss battle that I'm stuck on, with, again, with a character that can do a lot of the things you can do, which is a cool concept, um, and it's a really cool boss battle. The music's really... I mean, the music in this whole game is really good, but, like... The music in that boss battle especially is pumping. Like, I'm like, yeah, let's fucking do this. But it's like, I will get so close. I've gotten so close multiple times. And there's just like maybe two, three hits left. But because I can only take four hits before, well, yeah, take four hits um, uh, before I die. Like, I don't feel like I have a fighting chance. Like, if this had a difficulty setting, okay. Right? Like, but I can buy health and I can't get that health back without redoing the beginning of the stupid fucking level. Like just at least, or let me just get to the boss fight instead of having you redo that intro level all the time. But then like the second boss took a while too. And I'm going to be honest with you, that second boss battle is not fun. It's just kind of boring. Um, so I don't know. The, the, I gave this game a seven, I think. Um, mm. And like, that should tell you kind of what how I still feel about this game. It's still a really good game. I do not want to focus on the negative. I think the positives far outweigh the negative, but the negative are also weighing this down still. So it's still a great game, but this game would have been so much better without them. I would have preferred a really difficult stage as the boss battle, right? Yeah. Um, like have them have me have Pepper chase someone through a stage, and you have to maintain constant speed. Like, th- there's so many really cool ideas that they do with the, the the drill too. Like one stage, I'm not gonna spoil it. Sorry, I'm not gonna spoil it. But one stage plays very differently than the rest. But they constantly have you changing back to the drill. Um, they introduce a grapple mechanic. The first time you use it, oh, it's so satisfying. Like. I don't think there's a better better grapple mechanic in a game because of the way they use the momentum in this um, because that's the whole purpose. I, I don't know. It, it's just disappointing that they maybe felt they needed to have bosses. Maybe that was their vision. I don't know. Um, but I think it just weighs down the experience too much to not be brought up. And that's it for me. I, I mean, I'm still struggling to figure out what the fuck I want to play. Like I played some World of Horror and that wasn't hitting so I'm I'm in a I'm in a bad rut. <laughs> yeah, I hate those times. All right, Terrence, what you got? Um, a lot. Hang on, let's see here. Okay, so <clears throat> I uh I played a lot of uh, well, you know, let's talk about this first. So I played the um <laughs> the Suicide Squad. The the season one stuff started with the Joker. See, he was going to delete uh, it, and he was like, I can't do that. Oh, no, I did. I deleted it, but I deleted it after I played it. So, like, because I didn't, I didn't read, because um, I guess I had hopped on there before everybody had started, you know, getting online and complaining. But essentially, uh, the character is locked behind progress. Like, you have to do some grinding before you even, like, can unlock Joker. So, and you have to play, like, it was like at least 15 of the 15 times of the older variety of missions before you like can even unlock Joker and actually start to see some of the new content. Like, I I think that there was a couple of things that was sprinkled on there, but it didn't count towards um, the infamy rank or whatever the fuck is. They got so many convoluted stuff on there now. It's ridiculous. But I was like, nah, I'm cool. Uninstall. I did want to play as Joker, but nah, I'm good. I've you could never... just buy it. Uh, yeah, for ten dollars, I ain't gonna do that. Fuck that. Like, yeah, you could just buy a joke. Nah, man. Like, I don't understand. Cause I mean, Avengers and can't really think of any other ones right now. But I'm sure there's other games that I've played. I know there is that that have released characters like this, and none of them, to my knowledge, have have like locked the new character behind you having to grind out a whole bunch of stuff. Now, story progress or something. Yeah, it makes sense. But 
I don't know. Like, and then, oh God, this it, oh man. And I, I guess I can't talk about too much of this without spoiling it, but they they use this mechanic in in Suicide Squad to um, extend the life cycle of the game, essentially, uh, to make it a um, you know a live service game. So they they have different seasons. So it, basically, it in order to you for you to complete the story and get the full picture, you will have to have beaten the final boss in this game 13 different times. Um, there, is anybody still with, hiding that? I don't know, but I know post, when I had It's post-content, like, in-game stuff. Let's be fair, the 2,000 people that have played this game have probably already either given up or done that. That's true. Listen, I just never know where the line is, like, because I know some people are passionate about the sport and stuff, and I don't, I don't be trying game. to offend. Like, I really only, like, I don't be trying to offend. But I mean, I in my zest or hype, I say something, and then you know, people that I know will get butt hurt, and then they'll be here's, mad. Here's or the way I look at this Please. case, uh, like, just as an outsider, I, to me, do you want someone to play this game? Man, nah, you right. I think yeah, you right. Yeah, yeah, you right. Like, there's, right. there's a level of like, do you think? Uh, and and then I guess the other question you ask yourself is, are people enjoying this? Like, will I spoil the f- fun for? Yeah, most people? I think. Man, I don't if this think game, you're the fun. if this game ever goes on Game Pass, you should play through the campaign and delete it. Yeah, bas- yeah, for sure. Because the initial campaign is there. So yeah, I just fuck it. I just yeah. So basically, because if you don't know, it, yo, Brainiac is the, is the boss in this game. It's in every and, fucking trailer. Yeah, I'm, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so because multiverse is the new hotness, um, essentially he has replicated himself throughout the multiverse. And in order to fully de- defeat him they have to defeat all of his cl- all of the the clones basically so they have to defeat all 13 of them well you know you you play the campaign and you you face him or whatever else and it's you know brainiac whatever um and what they were told or what we were told is that when you get these different dlc steps it'll be a different boss fight like you have to face a different variant well <laughs> apparently the the variants are just going to be like swaps like palette swaps so the the first one the one that's in this there's two actually because this is like episode one and two so the first one is a brainiac with green lantern powers the i think the the episode two one is going to be brainiac with like flash power or superman superman powers so basically each of the brainiacs is just going to have a variation of so they're gonna the just fight Justice like League. the other game yep. the other people you've already fought that is so yep. fucking lame yep Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, and, and it's that I get. God, like it's. I was really rooting for him. I was really rooting just, for him. I just remember, had, this is where Warner Brothers thinks all gaming should be. Yeah. No. Just and remember, just this is the sense. developer that made Arkham Asylum. And that's just sad. Well, okay, but to there, because I know, and, and you say that, like the story in this is good. Like the the story, I, I liked the story. It's not going to be for everybody. I know people have complained about portrayals and different things, but in the context of the story, because you people are just seeing little snippets that people want you to see, it all makes sense. Especially if you take a step back and think about, you know, the entirety of the Arkham series and stuff like that. It 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 makes sense. Like it's what they did with it. I mean, it was there, whatever. But anyways, I like the story, but this artificial way of you know making a game feel longer by just simply you know swapping powers or whatever but it's still the same balls like it's even because you beat the game Mm -hmm. it's even the same the fight is even the fight is even the same so you have to like hit the ads to get the shield down and then you attack him and then he does his thing and then there's more ads and wash rinse repeat like it's just now there's like green the final boss was the least fun part of that game right like I, I just ah, oh, I really, I was rooting for him. I was, but not nah, uninstalled, man. It's, it's a wrap. Like I don't even, and I, I saw some of the characters that they have that they leak that I guess are coming, and I maybe one or two I would care about, but if I have to get on there and, and grind to play them, fuck that. I was, ex- I was excited what? for Joker until I saw the version of the Joker that they put in there, and I was like, yeah, I'm not grinding for that. That weird Injustice 2 level Joker. Uh, I just, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's not for me. Sorry. 
Yeah, it's it is it is definitely a weird version of Joker that they that they created. But you which know, is sad because I like the versions of the four characters that are in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I do too. But um, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. Oh well. Also, if you're nitpicking comic book stuff, get, get the fuck out of here. I can't. I can't with y'all. Also, man. Everything has happened in a comic book that is dumb. I okay? Mean, Listen. I think, I think DC Multiverse actually predates most of the multiverse shit we see nowadays. Oh, 100% does. I it started it does. back with Crisis yeah. shit. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I think it started with Crisis, and that was just because they needed to explain why Golden Age Batman and Silver Age Batman had de- very different morals. Yeah, right. that Crisis <laughs> shit's been going on forever, whatever the fuck. I don't know, it's, it don't matter. Yeah, people, is, I, and it's it's wild, too, because I saw somebody complaining about, um, uh, what was it? Oh, the, the Marvel Rivals thing. Oh, God, don't let me forget. I have a story about that shit. Anyways, um, so I saw somebody post about Marvel Rivals Spider-Man, and they was like, oh, my God, this is just a, this is the worst version of Spider-Man ever. Look at this trash suit. This is ridiculous. I was like, man, you young niggas, you know, when I was younger, I used to complain about stuff like this, but it's still, it's Spider-Man, bruh. Like, it's just the outfit. You know it's somewhere in the multiverse. Somewhere that nigga is rocking a fit that you don't agree with. Like, I mean, just play the game. Like, it doesn't change his path. Like, uh, like comic book people, and it's funny because I used to be one. Like, they really, ah, oh, man, they go too far sometimes. Like, because I used to be that one. Like, oh, his costume is wrong. That's not comic accurate. Now I just want to be entertained. I'm, like, I'm I, sorry. Like, I, if somebody ever said it's not comic accurate to me in real life, I would just, like... I'll give Bruh, him a long listen. stare, and then I might just like <laughs> like just turn around, walk away, and then turn back and front hand, back hand ass. I don't know. Depends just... on what we're arguing about. If you're talking about some video game no one cares about, there's a big difference. Like I don't give a shit yeah. that the Joker looks like crap in Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. I just I just don't. Man, but I'm also tired like of the Joker. And... So DC really needs to stop true? with these long ass names. You remember that fucking. Birds of Prey, the Fantastical Adventures of Harley. Yes, Quinn. like God Harley. damn. No, it was it was like the it wasn't even Fantastical Adventures. It was like the um, it was a fancy word for her to like become free. It was like the Unbreakable. So, it was, oh God, I can't even. Remember. It was it was ridiculous. Of Harley Quinn. Emancipation. That's what it was. Oh, yes, Jesus Christ, I was kidding. I thought, oh my God. I'm pretty sure it was Emancipation. I'm almost uh, certain. It was I gotta look this up now. I gotta look this up. It's uh, like. It's a ridiculously long title. It's it. By the way, it's just dubbed "Birds of Prey" now. Oh, okay. Uh, they cut the rest of that. They cut the rest of it out, but the original title was "Birds of Prey" and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Also, about, emancipation should not be used on a word for. Anyways. Dude, you skipped right over "fantabulous." That's part of the title too. So, so. And then I'm pretty sure they changed the name to Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey at some point, too. They they just call it Birds of Prey now, is what it's just called now. Which, by the way, the movie's not not bad. No, it's not. It's entertaining. It's entertaining. I think the problem was that no one knew what it was. No. Yes. Nobody still knows what it is. Right, because they kept switching it up. Because it was like, okay, so they're supposed to be a new crew. Okay, is this just the continuation of Harley Quinn stuff? Like they would send us like mixed marketing shit. Because I was still at the movie theater when that came out. Like, because the poster said one thing, but then we would get something else from Warner Brothers saying we'll cover this with this sticker. And we're and I'm like, damn, what y'all? Ah! Anyways, Warner Brothers is a mess. They they need some help. Um. Moving on from Suicide Squad. I have some good stuff that I played. I'm still rocking in Jedi Survivor. Uh, that game is excellent. Uh, I got stuck for a little while on that awful thing. I didn't even know that that dude was in the game. I think I had vaguely recall reading something about that. But that 17 times took me to kill him. I don't know what you're talking times. about. In Jedi Survivor, the, the Ooga Booga son or whatever, the big, the frog. Oh, frog, yeah, okay. I was like, well, you got to be more specific than the dude. I know. I'm sorry. I was trying to think of how to describe it, but, you know, not. But anyway, yeah. Like, and it's wild because I wasn't expecting that. Like, I was like, oh, I just, because I sent you a video, I, I was just landing to get some loot. And like, it drops into a fight. And I was like, damn it. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, that game is still good. Still playing Final Fantasy 16. Um, Played a lot of that last night. That, oh, God, that game is so, that game is just beautiful. It's such a beautiful game. I mean, you got plenty of time to look at it. It's so epic. You you know what, man? Listen, (laughs) listen. 
and and I and I you right. They they do talk a lot, but they do <laughs> ease up on the talking because I I have put hands more than I have been talking to people at this point. So like um I do, I like that game. I but they do do a lot of of talk, and it's funny too because at this point I pretty much can call it. Like I'll get into a fight or whatever, and I'm like I bet mm, put the controller down. Yep, there it is. Cutscene. Here we go. Like I pretty much know what is coming based off of what like I just did in the game, which is funny. Um, but that game is still good. Final Fantasy 14, still excellent. Still, you know, rocking our way to, uh, I think I got to get 60 because I want to be a dancer. That was the class that I was working on. Yeah, I do. A tiny dancer. It's just, it's just tall, funny the way you said that. Like, I want to be a dancer. I know. I, that was on purpose. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can do that. Too, uh, Princess Peach show time. Uh, you shouldn't, okay. You shouldn't do that in Princess Peach show time. Gotcha. All right. Um, what else did I play? Uh, I no, I didn't mess with that. Um, oh, I played the Stellar Blade demo. Oh man, I'm waiting. I've been waiting. Um, on this. uh, I so I mean, I um, well, first of all, I I don't care that this child is whatever she, however they drew her, whatever. Like, cause it's wild. Well, she's cause based I realized, on a real like, person, Terrence. Yeah, I. Wow. Okay. See, no, man. Listen. So I play, I realized I played that game, and I was like, damn, I didn't. I ain't not once like looked at her ass or nothing. Like I, you, the internet would have you think that this game is just tits and ass. That's all it is. Like, and I see like stuff on Twix where people are talking about ass, like it was a shot titties, of her ass and titties. There he is. I was yeah. waiting on the ass, song titties, to come out. Titties, ass and titties. <laughs> <laughs> But it's her swinging on this, like, you know, pole about the jump or whatever. And, like, you know, her boobs are moving in an unnatural fa- I don't know why they think that's how breasts move. I, I don't understand. But people, dude was like, this is 100% culture. And I'm Have like, you seen- oh, <laughs> 100% believe- culture? Yeah, that is actually what? a thing that was said on the internet. I just, I can't. <laughs> like, what, what does that mean? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, culture, the you know culture what they don't get? Men who have never saying. touched a woman. I was gonna say, you know what they don't get? Yeah, that, that, that. Yeah, yeah ab- absolutely, absolutely. Um, but okay, so <laughs> graphics. The, the game looks really good. Like it's it's a very graphically good looking game. It has unskippable cutscenes, which I don't like because I don't care. I just wanted to see what the combat was like. Um, mm. uh, which mm. it's. I know you didn't like it. I didn't mm. hate it. Uh, I didn't get a Sekiro vibe from it though. I mean, it is it is not as fast as Devil May Cry or Ninja Gaiden. It's not even but, close. Well, but I think I think maybe for me, I'm giving it a pass because like, and it's funny because I went from that to Final Fantasy 16, and I was like, damn, it ain't even as fast as this. Like, Final Fantasy 16 is faster Mm-mm. than uh Stellar Blade. Mm-mm. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I, maybe it's bad. because I'm. It feels. I didn't think it felt bad. It, it feels. I, I don't know. The timing doesn't feel right. The attacks feel really heavy to the point of where, like, one of the things that drives me nuts in this game is you get started into a combo, and mm-hmm. the enemy will go to attack you, and since your attacks are so slow and take so much grind up, that you can't get out of them interrupting your combo. It just does not feel good. Like, like it should, like it, it just gotcha. doesn't, it, I, I don't, and when you lock onto an enemy, she slows down even more, which is wild, like, I don't know, man, I don't, I don't care for the combat, it feels like it wants to be a Souls game, except it's not, it, it's not that, like, it, well, the, did you play, go ahead, no, go ahead, I was just gonna say, this is the first time I've ever seen a developer go online. They're like, if this game feels slow, make sure you're in game mode. Motherfucker, it is 2024. Oh, man. Everybody's TV goes into game mode when you play on PlayStation 5. Right. It is automatic. Automatically. It's automatically. Like Nobody is not in game it. mode. Your game is slow. That's... <laughs> and here's, okay. the other, here's the other thing. Like... Everybody's talking about what you were talking about at the beginning, where, oh, look at her boom, look at her butt, whatever. People say that about Nier, 
But people also talk about how good the combat in Nier is. Nobody's talking about how good the combat in this game is. Because it's not that good! Like, even the pole swinging feels bad. Like, it feels like she weighs 400 pounds. I just... Uh, well, I, yeah, I told you, her jump is booty cheeks. Like, yeah, I, like, like it, she hardly gets up. I'm like, what the fuck? Look, what okay, this? your character feels like... You know in Dark Souls, everybody's played Dark Souls. <clears throat> Oh, you know, yeah. you know the fat roll. Like when you when you're wearing <laughs> yeah. like super armor, that's what she feels like. See, okay. So she feels heavy for sure, but I, I didn't. She didn't feel that heavy. Like she definitely feel heavy. Man, like I, I thought there was gonna be more swinging on that pole, but she barely moves. Like she, she's like she's like struggle. She's like fat Nate Drake when she's swinging on that pole. <laughs> like she can't swing back and forth that well. Like I, man, I don't know. I'm you sure know, the game is with fine. You saying, with you saying swinging on that pole, all I want to say is like, I just pictured the Duke Nukem hand with the money coming Oh, out. yeah. <laughs> shake it, baby. Shake yeah, it, baby. Shake it, baby. No, I'm talking about like, you know how when you grab on a pole and you're swinging forward? Like, and you no, I, I, I understood that, too. I understood yeah, that, too. Yeah, like, just, when you do that in the funnier. game, like, it, it's one of those things where you feel like you're not going to make it to the next pole because you're so heavy. That's what it feels like mm. when you do it in this game. So... Did you finish? Did you finish the demo? No, like, I got bored. I got bored about 30, 40 minutes into it. Okay, because I because I think because my my observations because um, I thought that was the end. Honestly, I didn't. I thought after you fought that boss thing and you know whatever that was it. But then it like opened up and I was like, oh shit, there's more. And I turned it off because I was like, okay. You talk so about when I you get to the where... city area, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made yeah. it that far. I was, I did a bunch of that city area, and okay. I haven't done any of that. Okay, there's... that must be where you swing and stuff. Yeah, I that's where you swing, swing and stuff. Thing. But like the combat really sticks out to you when you get surrounded by like four or five enemies, which happens in that city area, and you're trying okay. to like move back and forth between the characters. Which, by the way, pet peeve of of action games. If I lock onto you in combat and there's four or five <clears throat> enemies surrounding me. When I kill one, lock on to the next one. Oh my god, right? This game like, does not do just... that. This game does not Ooh. do that. Like, you have to relock onto a new character. Also, I got another pet peeve. I, I got a lot about this game. I apologize. When you pick up a code for a locker, you got to remember that. Oh yeah, I, I did do that. That was in the opening bit. Like, I was like, what the fuck? And it's, like, not, and it's not like it's numbers or letters. It's like some fucking Greek Ooh. alphabet shit. It's an elven language. Yeah, and you're like, what was the code? I don't know. Like, thank God there's a hint button that'll like pop it up real quick so you can see it. Yep. Yeah, I was like, they expect people to memorize, sir. I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. I'm not yeah. gonna remember this code. I'm not gonna remember this this elf language of these like seven digits. I don't remember what that is. Yeah, that you showed was it wild. to me for twelve yeah. seconds. I, I don't yep. I don't know what it was. I, I, I You'd be lucky if I remember the first letter. <laughs> I don't know, man. All I see people talking about this game is exactly what you talked about at the beginning and nothing else. Because you're game. right. It's visually, it's stunning. It's a beautiful game. When you play it, it's got so many problems. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to I'm gonna have to boot it back up. And because, because again, my my observation is based off of the part, the just the beginning part. So there was never more than one enemy at a time, um, and oh, then it was just that little boss thing. So yeah, see, I'm gonna have to play it a little bit into the city to actually see what's because I, I like I said, I walked away from that part like, okay, this combat is all right, but again, I wasn't surrounded. So okay, yeah, I, I'll, I'll mess with it and then and I'll report back. But it, if that's how you sound, I don't think I'm gonna have a good time because I that was what my saving grace was with this was I didn't give a fuck of how she looked because I'm a grown man and not a weirdo. Um, so I was just here to, you know, to play an action, you know, combat game. So I thought it was going to be fucking this, Devil this May game, Cry Ninja Game. Yeah, this game needs to be a little more Devil May Cry, a little less Dark Souls. I, the, the Sekiro stuff I don't get either, because Sekiro's much faster than this. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That, that's what I was saying, because I think Jay had said that he, he was getting that kind of vibe from, and I thought, again, because I haven't played the city part, I was like, well, maybe that comes later. Maybe that's that's when it starts to feel like that. Like, the parry, so I, like, as much as I suck at Sekiro and Dark Souls, like, their combat feels good. 
Like it feels really good. Yeah. This combat just doesn't. It, this feels like we got souls at home. Like it don't. Man, I they I we really need to evolve past this souls combat. I don't know why we are stuck on this type of combat, man. I mean, I'll give like, them credit. At least it ain't on the goddamn bumpers. You know? I, right? Because that was the first thing that I that I was hyped about. I was like, God, it's on buttons. Thank you, Jesus. Like, I hate the bumper shit. Ugh. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I'm going to wrap mine up real quick so you can go. Uh, I think... Shit, I, that's probably it for real, honestly. Oh, I did. I played some more Cassette Beast. I like that game a lot. Um, I actually am going to pick that up before it comes off of Game Pass. I don't know when it's leaving. Like, I don't think it's slated to leave, but it's like it's on sale too. It's like 20 bucks. Um, like I said, it's like Pokemon, but. Pokemon! You, mm, but you don't catch them. You record the beast onto like cassette tapes like the 80s like and it has like this pixel and the whole thing is very 80s because like my character is like a black dude with a box a box cut like i got a high top like you can make your own you know you make your character in the game um and like you when you record okay so when you uh when you fight you turn into the creatures that you have so like if it was pokemon you would actually turn into pikachu and then once pikachu got defeated you would like go back into yourself so you'd be standing there with your own health bar until you picked another creature then you turn into them so you have two health bars basically um you know your creature and then yourself so when you're recording one when you're trying to catch one you turn into yourself and like you know pull out the tape recorder and like while your partner is attacking the other one while you're trying to get the data i don't know it's it's a fun game if you like pokemon stuff and you like those sort of those sort of creature collecting games check this out it has it has a decent story killer soundtrack um, which one of the things I like about this game and Final Fantasy uh, 16 is how the the music will play like an orchestral beat while you're out in the open, open world and kind of moving around. But then when you get into a fight, it doesn't skip a beat like the set. The music just picks up. But now there's like words and more like drums and it's all dr- it's more dramatic and stuff. And they do that in Cassette Beast as well. It's not as dramatic because it's using kind of like the chip tune kind of stuff. But when you go inside, like you start to get words from the music and everything like and it doesn't like skip a beat. I, don't, I dig when they do that type of stuff. Um, Fire Emblem is another series that that I love that does that. Uh but uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably it. I mean, I played some Hearthstone, but y'all don't care about card games, so. Oh, what are you talking about? I played Overwatch too. You want to talk about that? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, okay. You played a Blizzard game. That's what that we played some Blizzard games. You play Blizzard games every week because Blizzard is like all the all-knowing, all-seeing At video game company. And a lot of people playing Blizzard games this week as Diablo went into Game Pass, so you know. It did. I saw that. Yeah. I booted it up. I was like, yep, I still don't... Th- like, maybe I should start, like, a seasonal character or something. Because, like, where I'm at in my game, I just don't care. You should. Start a se- Well, see, that's the thing, though. Because, like, if you start over, like, you still have to beat the campaign. Because, like... If, oh, like, God. Okay, I'm probably never going to play this game. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, even if you made a seasonal character, you still would have to play it like you were playing you know through the campaign like it would just unlock that extra seasonal stuff along the way but you still have to finish the story to actually unlock the second level for like getting gear and stuff like it's yeah see the thing yeah, the thing was back. the thing with games like this that drive me crazy is like i don't mind depth in a game but the thing is is i like to just play a game the way i want to play it and then the death the depth is like there to enhance the experience I don't want the depth to be like required for the experience. Like, I think that's, that's a me problem that a lot of games aren't going to get into. Cause a lot of those games are like, especially with like Diablo, it's like, you got to manage all this bullshit with the loot and like taking stuff off. And like, I don't want to fuck with all that. Like, I don't, I just want to kill fucking demons, you know? Right. And you yep. can't do that in this game. Like you just can't. Like the game requires you to do all this extra shit. There's, that I just... there's, there's two ways of playing, and I, it sounds like Diablo Four Four has removed one of those because you could just grind, right, and, and kill yeah. stuff. Yep. You can't anymore. No. But from the sounds of it, it's pure min maxing now. Yeah, like in it Diablo is. Three, you could min max, and and eventually I got to the point where I wanted to do that because like the game had given me so much joy, and I'd gotten so used to like the gameplay of it. But it wasn't mm. required. You didn't have to do it. In Diablo 4, you have to do it, and I think that's where it loses me. 
that's that, my problem with uh, B- Borderlands Two. B- b- the end game became just pure min max. Yeah, the end game is the the campaign was good, but like after that, I kind of quit. Man, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of positivity going on this week, and I'm not going to continue it because I'm going to talk about South Park Snow Day, and that game is, is ass. Oh, man. Yeah, I thought I talked about that last week. Yeah. I played, I tried to play it, and I'm like, I'll be honest with you, I, I laughed my ass off with the fart power where I would shoot myself up in the air. Like, I did that for like 20 <laughs> yes. minutes. That shit's funny. When I had to actually go do a level, that is one of the worst, like, Horde mode yeah. games I think I've ever played. It it's is pretty bad. It is so bad. The combat feels awful. Um, mm-hmm. and it, you know the the thing that the enemies can do during the levels is perfectly named, and I laugh every time it happens. <laughs> yeah. But when they call bullshit, like oh, this game's yep. about to get worse than it already is. Yep. Yep, but that is perfect. The bullshit powers is a perfect name. Like, but yeah. <laughs> Giving me a fucking yeah. noodle tube to hit people with for fucking, what is it, like 45 seconds to a minute or some shit? Yep. Yep. <sighs> it's like, I, it does, and I put this in, even in the review, like, it does some stuff that I think is cool. The bullshit power thing kind of being one of them. But all the stuff around it, like you said, the combat it's bad like the the general movement just feels really oh floaty. it feels awful fuck the control the camera control on the right stick out the gate is so like you pushed it i pushed it to the right a little bit i circled my character 37 times i was mm-hmm. like what the fuck yeah. what? why is that amp so high like i don't understand what i uh like it like the concept and stuff is is neat but they just they fumbled the execution, unfortunately. And it's got and fucking. I don't know. It's got fucking cards in it, and the cards aren't even good. Yeah. No. Like they're trying no, to you force. Know I like card games. Well, the funny thing is, it's like the cards are trying to force me into using my bow and arrow. It's like, like ninety mm-hmm. percent of the cards are about your bow and arrow. I'm like, I don't even like the bow and arrow because it's so goddamn slow. Mm-hmm. And because and, you get a. Uh... What's what's the other one? You get a wizard wand and something else. There's only like three weapons. Like there's three melee weapons and three um, range weapons. None of the range weapons are cool. They all fire with an arc. Like you when you aim stuff, it's like uh like up and like you have to like I don't know. It's it's just weird. Like you can't straight shot anything. Um, the melee combat is just you just you just spamming buttons like you just button mashing the whole time yeah like and then like the little as you kill the enemies they're like ah oh, you got me oh again like they just repeat the same <laughs> lines and it gets on your fucking nerves i'm like man i'm about to go upstairs and whoop my kids right now and they ain't even did nothing they're gonna be like what do i do like i just got tired of hearing kids like it's oh like i just oh man they they fumbled they yeah it's it's back, it's not but. a good video game and it's like the cutscenes are funny, but I'm gonna be real honest with you. They are. The they're really are. just recycling old South Park jokes. They absolutely are. Like there's nothing gonna... there's <laughs> nothing original in there. It's like the same jokes you've heard a thousand times. Like mm-hmm. the, the reason yep. the show is good is because it's new jokes. Yep. I don't right. know, it's man. Like in the review, like that's why I like that show because they continually like it is new and 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 like I think I said this last week too. Like the idea behind this is cool because they wanted it as an avenue to kind of metaverse with the show. But if this is the gameplay of it, ooh, like no. bruh, this game ain't gonna nah. last long enough for them to do show episodes Mm-mm. of this. Nah. Um, I started uh, Planet Zoo console edition. Uh, that's another one of those build your own zoo kind of strategy games. Um, I, I haven't played enough to talk too much about it, but yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's one of those games that Ryan would get anxiety if he just saw the menu. Ah, got you. So I'm going to play a little bit more of that. Now I'll roll through the indie games. Most of it's not all that interesting, although I did play one that if you like Inside, you should probably check out. It's called One Last Breath. Um. It is really trying to be Inside or Limbo or one of those games where you're like in this dark area and you're moving you, through left to right kind of thing. Do you think it was named after the Creed song? <laughs> I hope not. 
Um, but you play as like this like plant lady who can like use plants to create like bridges and stuff. And then uh, I guess there's like some aliens that have like crash landed and like you find their pods and like you see them in the background all limbo style doing creepy shit. And it's very dark. Um, but I, I, I had fun with it. I played through like, I don't know, like an hour of it. I thought it was pretty good. You played through, I guess, a good portion of it then, because somebody on Steam says the game time is one to two hours. Really? Yep. Like, I yeah, felt like, nice. wow, I felt like I was just getting started. Okay. Um. Well, maybe I'll finish it then. <laughs> uh, and I got to talk about this game, because I felt like I was having yeah, a fever. I was waiting for this. I, was, I felt like I was having a fever dream, man. I played a game called The True. And The True True. It starts off with you in a room with literally the, the, the teleporter from the fly. And they ain't even trying to hide it because when you use it the first time, it, it says you get an achievement called the fly. Nice. So, I, I, I don't know, man. So, think like, like PS1 style Resident Evil, like, that's the way your character moves. Um, and you start off in this room with a bunch of terminals and a bunch of doors, and I'm like, man, what am I doing? Like, I walk up to things like, you can't use the terminal right now. You can't do this right now. You can't go out this door right now. But the only door that worked was the fucking shower door. And it said, take a shower. I was like, okay, so maybe that's like a plot point. So I click the button, and then it goes into this, like, PlayStation 1 stiff ass CGI cutscene of this woman taking a shower. And I mean they, they don't leave anything to be secret. Like this woman has no secrets after this vi- this video. And it just kept going. Right. I was That's like wild. I got to a point where I was like I'm just going to let it go see how long it goes. It's minutes. <laughs> minutes of a shower scene. And the best Love part it. is the best part is, is when you when you finally finish it, you get an achievement. I need to look this achievement up. I just had it up. Hold on, it's trying to load. Uh, come on. The achievement's called Hate Steam, and the description is Hate Water. And I want you to know that 70% of the people who have played this game have that achievement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So after after that wildness, I was like, all right, so I got to figure out. So I finally figured out how to use a teleporter. Teleporter takes me to this room where apparently a doctor was killed. Like there's some blood on the table and there's a robot. And like the only thing you can do in this room is pick up the robot and take it back. There's literally nothing else you could do. So I took the robot back to the room and then I was supposed to like put it on the terminal and look at its memory. And it was connect the dots where you're like connecting the one computer chip to another chip. And I tried like 40 different iterations and none of them did anything. And finally I was like, you know what? I can't. I can't anymore. I feel like I've had a stroke. I can't play this. What is this game? What are the words? I don't know. So I'm going to read you some of the... Okay, I'm going to read you some of the achievements because they're, the they're the best thing. We got Try It, which is push the red button. We've got So Strange, which is baby clothes. <laughs> we got Smart Girl, baby. which is melt the wax. I don't... Okay, this one's called Hacker. The description, solve he first puzzle. Okay. (laughs) This is... Okay, this must be one of those games that's just, like, worth a whole bunch of, like, you know, for a quick thousand achievement points or something, but, like... Dude, I played it for, like, 30 minutes and only got 20 achievement points, so apparently it's not. Oh, wow. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. This is a fever dream. This is one of those games where I'm like, I'm not going to suggest that you play it, but if you ever have a chance to play it, take the opportunity. Definitely check it out. Definitely definitely like, check it out, because it's, uh, whoo, it's something. Uh, I was going to revisit Dragon's Dogma 2 because they released a patch this week, uh, which allows you to turn off the ray tracing, which I'm assuming is going to help with the frame rate, but you know, like everything else in the world, um, the Xbox patch isn't there yet. It's only out on PlayStation. Imagine that. Yeah. So 
Also, this patch does something that's crazy. I don't know if you've ever seen this in a video game. It is revolutionary. It lets you start a new game. Are you serious? Did I not oh talk about God. that when I when I talked about the game last week? Uh, I you didn't, but I read about it that you weren't able. There was no way to start a new game or something without deleting your old one or whatever. Yeah, but you can't just delete it. Like you don't understand. So I started a game, and the character I created, I didn't like. Like I didn't, you know, like when you create a character the first time you see him in a cutscene, they look stupid. You're like, oh, I want to redo that. So <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna start a new game. You can't. So I'm like, okay, well, let me delete my save. No option to delete your save. So I had to go into the Xbox, like, back-end menu and delete it from the cloud. And then I could start the a new game. Heck? Yeah. It's crazy, man. How, how that is not just a normal function of a video game, I will never know. So... I plan to go back to that once the patch is live because I want to see if it improves the frame rate. Because I've decided that I'm just going to play that game. I'm not going to do the story. I'm going to play that game like I did Elden Ring where I just, I pick a destination and I just fucking go and I do everything along the way that I want to do. Because that's the best oh. part of that game. Like the story yeah. is kind of kind of blah. So. I've seen some cool like random stuff like i saw some video where people came and called they, there was like a giant or a what do you call it a, a fucking uh cyclops um and like he there was like a, a ravine or whatever somehow he like the cyclops tripped and made a bridge and like the dude's party walked over him and then like attacked his feet and dropped him in there and he got a whole bunch of experience i was like holy crap that's yeah. awesome Stuff like that is what makes this game fun, like discovering a cave and like, well, I'm going to go down in this cave. There's going to be some fucked up shit down in this cave. Like, that's the yeah. stuff I want to do. I don't... <laughs> like, the story has me going into this dungeon and talking to this dude and sneaking around. And like I talked about last week, the AI is just fucking brain dead. And then all of a sudden yeah. it's like the, the god tier AI. And I'm just like, this this part of the game's not all that fun. Also, this game is aggressive on the, the encumbrance. And fuck all of that. I hate encumbrance. It's the worst mechanic in video games, and I don't know why people find it fun. I don't either. Like, I don't. why do I have to manage my weight limit? Lord! Yeah, and, and just in case you didn't know, the, the like, like, you can have a camping kit that you can use to, like, make camp out in the world, which is very helpful. That thing weighs a goddamn ton. Of course it does. <sighs> So. Can you still store stuff on your ponds? Yes, you can still store stuff on your ponds. You can even store them on the ponds that you've brought in from like other games. But if you ever mm. dismiss them, then like your shit all goes back to your storage at the inn, which means you got to walk your ass all the way back to the inn and get it out if you want it. So, got you. So it's it's just kind of a pain in the ass to like manage your inventory because if you want to store it, that's cool. But dude, it is way back in town, and, and in case you don't remember. You can't really fast travel unless you got one of them stones. Yeah, and you know you could pay for one. Apparently, it's like two dollars and fifty cents, I think, for a fairy stone. That's just God. You can buy them in the game, but they're like limited quantity. Like I think in the first town there are five of them at the store, and once they're gone, they gone. Man. So, yeah, I don't understand why they rolled back that. Because he's like, well, I think you should explore the world, but give me 250 and you don't have to. <laughs> like, sometimes I just want to fast travel back. to. It's not like I want to use it to go everywhere. I want to explore the world. And also, if your world is so interesting to explore, people will do it. You don't got to force them into it. Like, shit. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, if I did, like, I agree that the world is interesting and fun to traverse. But, like, that is like a red flag when somebody says that. They're like, well, I want you to experience the world because it's so good. Most of the time, I wouldn't believe your ass because, like, that just sounds like a way for you to sell me a goddamn crystal for 250 uh, Yep. I don't know. I like that game a lot. I just, I don't know. Maybe it's just me getting older. Maybe it's just some of the decisions they made, but I don't, I don't love it as much as I did the first one. Yeah, I'm going to wait for a sale. I figure it'll probably be on sale come Black Friday. Should be fixed by then, too. 
Yep. You can lock it to 30 frames a second now, which is nice. And the new patch that Xbox doesn't have. <sighs> All right. Poor Xbox. Dude, Xbox just sucks. I don't know if you saw, I don't think it's in the news, but I don't know if you saw the Hi-Fi Rush thing. <laughs> I did, about the uh, shadows or whatever. What? You know what's funny really? about that? You want to know what's funny about that story? Those shadows are sure. like that on PC too, not just Xbox. Of course they are. So, But like nobody cares that they're like that on PC. They're like, oh, well, it's PC, it's PC, whatever. Right. whatever. It's the fact that PlayStation's better than Xbox. I'm like, it's, nobody's going to notice that goddamn shadow when you're playing this game. Shut the fuck up. And I had some dude on Twitter tell me, like, well, that's the version I'll buy. I'm like, well, I hope you enjoy your shadow. No, oh, what, what did he want from you? Like, for you to, like, rub the top of his head and be like, that's a good little uh, <laughs> consumer. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm going like... to buy it. I was like, do you have Game Pass? Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, I, I think the... I saw that comment. Yeah, and I I almost said something. I was like, let me turn down. <laughs> I was just what? like, Bro. okay, it's fine. Like, and that's why I said I wish I had a dollar every time I said they were going to support a developer. I was like, okay. Is this the $10 mm. Horizon conversation again? I can't. I can't have this right it's, now. No, so that one was extra stupid. Yeah, I was like, I can't have these conversations. Because right at now. least you can be like, yeah, you also use a different controller on the other console and stuff. Like, at least I can, go, like, the whole, I'm going to buy the more expensive version, but it's the exact same game for no other reason other than I simp for, for capitalism. <laughs> Please, let me be a good little consumer. <laughs> Motherfucker, I, dude, when I order food, like, I look for all the, like, I got that Capital One thing installed on my browser to give me discounts, because Fuck you! I ain't giving you more money than I want to. Oh, I don't, I don't right? need any money. Let me keep all of my money. Speaking of money, here's what's coming out this week that you can spend it on: uh, Xbox Series X, PlayStation Five. We've got Withering Rooms, Alchemist, the Potion Monger, Deceit Two, Knowledge Keeper, Cafeteria Nipponica. Uh, Double Dragon, Gaiden, Rise of the Dragon, Sacred Reunion. I didn't even play that new Double Dragon, did I? I don't remember if I did or not. Maybe I did. I actually want to play it. It's roguelike. Oh, wait, I did play that. I did. I forgot. Was it good? It wasn't bad. Actually, Hmm. I just, again, don't like the rogue part of it. Yeah. Uh, Freedom Planet 2. Ninja Village. Turbo Golf Racing and Dreamland Solitaire Dark Prophecy. Uh, A Space for the Unbound, Everdream Valley, Saviorless. Uh, Gigantic Ray. Oh, sorry, that's next week. Apologies. Wrong date. PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Not a lot. Uh, Construction Simulator Gold Edition. And then that's it. And then we'll go to the Nintendo Switch because that's the, the important system. What we got here? Uh, Drift Force Extreme Ultima Car Simulator 2024, uh, Flight Path Adventures in Venaris, Girl Genius Adventures in Castle Heterodyne. Um, Cats Organized Neatly. Colony Defense, the ultimate minimalist tower-based defense game. Crash Out Extreme. Deadland Chronicles. Doll Explorer. Arrow Gods Mirage. Korean Rail Driving Tour LRT. Ooh. Ooh. Jianbu? I don't know that word. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Make It Ikiyaki. Savage Age, Story Blocks the King, Sugar Tanks 2, Sushi Soul Universe, Kengoko. Sugar Tanks 2. Sugar Tanks 2. I mean, okay. I had to have the follow up. I was about to say, it, it was the first one. All right. Tengoku Struggle Strayside, The Brazil, The Gap, 
World War II Airplane Fight Battle War Squad, Devil's Calling, Hair Dye, Heisting, Kitchen Crisis, Kudzu, Life of Slime, No Umbrellas Allowed, Off-Road Jeep Quest Mountain Trails, Spy Guy Hidden Objects Deluxe Edition, Stunt Scooter Simulation, Find Room 96, Fire Race, and Last Bloody Snack. I don't, I don't know what any of that shit is. Man. That's a lot. It is, and I don't know what any of it I'm is. Not, I'm not looking up any of it because I just don't care. I, I don't either. <laughs> like, none of those names really, like, even piqued my interest. Yeah. No. All right. News time. It's been a week for Xbox. Let's just say that. Um, Windows Central has reported that Xbox and Toys for Bob, uh, the developers of Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, have reportedly reached an agreement for Toys for Bob's first game as an independent studio. It's a game similar to the games Toys for Bob's has made in the past, which is good, good news. Uh, according to Jez Corden, Xbox is prototyping a native Xbox handheld. Uh, keep in mind that this doesn't mean it will become a real project or product. Uh, Xbox added pre added started adding to preview mouse and keyboard support for Xbox Cloud Gaming on PC this week. Not every game during the preview will be supported, but you can play games like Fortnite, Sea of Thieves, and Halo Infinite, as well as some others. Uh, Phil Spencer did an interview with Polygon about the layoffs, the console business, and exclusives. Uh, He says the layoffs were for growth, which is a funny comment, but very PR. Uh, The console market isn't growing, we know that. That's that's just out there. Uh, Gen Z plays on mobile, that's probably true. Uh, new AAA IPs are a big risk, also probably true. And the math on making a game has definitely changed. Uh, also from this interview, Phil Spencer said he's wanted Epic Game Store and Itch.io and other stores to appear on Xbox. And then we had the Chris Dring rumor, where he heard at GDC that a major company who released a big game last year Don't know why they even bother supporting Xbox since the majority of sales are on PS5 and PC. He also heard that Xbox is now putting less focus on Game Pass. And boy, this didn't rile anybody up in the internet. Oh no, I'm sure. Good lord. So, Uh. man, I don't know. I get it. Like, you have to take into account that this is probably a European comment. Because the Xbox is basically dead in Europe. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's being yep. outsold like 8 to 1 or something, 9 to 1. Man. So, <clears throat> but then it doesn't help when you see like a game like, they're like, well, we're not doing the Xbox version now. But then mostly it's like these indie games, which like they can't afford to do it anyway. So, whatever. Even though we showed on Xbox's thing. Yeah, yeah that was weird, right? right? Like,. That's yeah. That is what's weird. Like I, I like Xbox did some marketing for us, but fuck them. You know that's. I can't handle this great vision <laughs> of a firefighter in space. Do you think it's? Do you think it's like a marketing thing from Sony, where like these developers that make their own their games? No, own... I, I think this. Well, is, no, no, I no. Just is... let, let me let me finish. So, like, I don't know if you've seen, like, the comments from a lot of developers, like, with the power of the PS5, we were able to do this. Like, have you seen that? I have. Like, it I came up about Stellar Blade. The people are just making fun of said stuff like that, too. Oh, 100%, but, like, it's weird. I, I, think, I, I think that is homegrown stupidity. Remember when God? I don't think that's corporate... Stupidity. I think that's just. Oh, you mean Randy Pitchford will say anything? Yeah, but do you remember how with the power of the PS5, it's, it's impossible it, 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 to yeah, make yeah. this game, except it came out on PS4. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> PS4 far after the fact too. Yeah. 
you weren't supposed to remember that they said that. You know, we were supposed. I to remember. That. I still remember. Goodbye, oh. Halo. Okay, on the back of the tribes oh, box. God. <laughs> ah! I forgot about that. <clears throat> no, I will never forget about that. I remember seeing the back of that box in the bargain bin at, at GameStop. That said goodbye, Halo. To have finished the comment that said, "Hello, bargain bin." Um, Elder Scrolls 30th anniversary message. God damn, it's 30 years. Uh, last but not least, yes, we are in development on the next chapter, the Elder Scrolls 6. Even now, returning to Tamriel and playing early builds has us filled with some of the joy, with some, the same joy, excitement, and promise of adventure. <sighs> okay. Man, I'm sorry. After Fallout 76 and Starfield, I'm a little timid about the next Bethesda Studios game. You know, and I said this about uh, even GTA 6, I I don't know if those big open world... I I don't know. I don't know. Like, I I, I have to see it, because I do... I like the sword and shield stuff, but I just feel like it's too much anymore like because it's going to have everything because they're going to try to throw everything in there and i i don't know i don't know and then yeah after starfield because that and fallout 76 mm, hey i, I, I don't, don't, cool I don't you know we'll see <sighs> when's the ps5 version <laughs> that's the there you go now you're asking the, the real questions here that's that's what people uh, want to know um, I I don't know why this caused so much of a stir, but the first images of the Xbox Series X digital leaked online. That's a white Xbox without a disk drive. Yeah, I I don't understand why that was such a. I I guess it was just a slow news day because I was like, um, it's just a white Xbox. Why y'all acting like this? Like, what in the world? Like, it's it's just a just a white Xbox. That was it. Like, okay, moving on. Yep. Um, I guess the conversation's happening because the PS5 Pro, and it's like, well, Xbox is just going to do a digital version of the Series X, and PS5 already outperforms Xbox. Is like, I don't, man, I don't know. None of this shit makes any sense. Uh, but you know what does make sense is Xbox adding a dynamic background for Blue Dragon, because fuck yeah, they should. Yeah. I forgot you put that. I need to change that on mine. Cause... Oh, it's all mine already. It is 100%. 100%. Nice. Uh, it actually game. replaced my avowed one, which the avowed one is fucking rad. I love that one. Um, I see that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah, I did like that. The, the skeleton one? Yeah, that one's cool. That yeah. and the cyberpunk yeah. one have been my favorite ones. Cyberpunk was cool. Uh, F-Zero Maximum Velocity is coming to Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack on March 29th, so it's already out. Right, the Nintendo of America is shaking up its Washington-based testing center uh, and laid off some of its contractors and converting others to full-time employees. We already talked about the Stellar Blade demo. It launched on Jim, uh, March 29th. Uh, you can now earn a digital Jim Ryan bobblehead in PlayStation Stars to celebrate his career. You yeah. just need to play a game that Jim Ryan has championed during his time at Sony. Oh wow! Is that how it's unlocked. That's how you unlock it, dude. I totally forgot PlayStation Stars Not existed. Like I don't Just bad. Can you play Ridge Racer on the PS5? I don't Is that not one did. of the backwards things? Uh, it was just because that was the one that he insulted, right? No, it's Gran Turismo. Oh, it was Gran Turismo. No, my bad. Ridge Racer. The only Ridge Racer you can play on PS5, I think, is the PSP version of Ridge Racers. Which is fucking hilarious why you cannot play the original Ridge Race. Like, if you think about the PS1, that is one of the games you think of. Yeah. And yet, Sony cannot get that up on their backward... Man, God. Their, their classics collection is so half-assed. So disappointing. It was PS1 and PS2. Man, you have, like, an infinite package to pull from that shit. Uh, PlayStation is introducing enhanced community game help coming later this year to all PS5 players. 
Uh, Chris String also had comments from GDC about a PlayStation 5 Pro. Um, developers didn't seem to feel they needed it. They weren't really making the most of the PS5 in the first place. I Yeah, like that's, I, I don't understand. We talked about this last week. I don't understand this Pro conversation. Like we haven't maxed out what we have. Let me okay. pull up, um, so the, I don't know if you saw the news story, I think it was Friday, uh, let me see if I can find it, there is a, um, a spec sheet of what is required for PS5 Pro, mm. uh, sorry, I'm digging for this, here we go. PS5 Pro enhanced requirements detailed uh, a PSSR to upscale resolution to 4K, a constant 60 frames per second, and add or increase ray tracing effects. Uh, PlayStation goes on to continue that games may also be given the PS5 Pro enhanced label if they offer any of the following enhancements, which includes increased target resolution for titles that run at a fixed resolution on a standard console, Increased target maximum resolution for titles that run at a variable resolution on the standard console. Increased target frame rate for the titles that target a fixed frame rate on the standard console. And inclusion of PS5 Pro ray tracing effects. <sighs> Wait. Okay. So it, it's kind of like the Xbox series, like the enhanced stuff? Is that what this is? Like... Oh, okay, 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 hold on. Let me take a step back here. Because I, I think I saw these specs and people were like super hyped because they were thinking that, oh man, now we're going to get like Dragon's Dogma at 4K, 60 frames a second. That's not what that means. That just means that they, the game will get a tag if it can hit those that criteria, right? Yes, like it'll, it, get it'll that say like that, PS5 right. Pro Enhance, but I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> Dragon's Dogma is not going to get a huge bump when the CPU is basically the same in the PS5 Pro, according to the le leaked specs, because Dragon's Dogma 2, the reason why it runs so slow is because it's CPU limited. Oh. So yeah, it's okay. not like right. the PS5 Pro is going to bump Grand Theft Auto 6 to 60 frames a second. It's just not going to happen. Like, you might get an extra 5 maybe 10 frames a second on Dragon's Dogma, but you ain't going to get a locked 4K60. Ain't no fucking way. So. Yeah, I just don't understand the need for this this pro. Because, like, even with the, that, like, the, well, I guess what they have to hit in order to get that, the tag or whatever to be considered pro enhanced or whatever. Like, isn't that what the, the PlayStation 5 can do now? Well, it says 8K on the box. I don't know if you know that. Right. So yeah, you, yeah. So I, what the fuck? So why is that this important? That oh oh, it, it, it's pro enhanced, but your PlayStation can do that now. Like <sighs> honestly, okay. this is just a reason for Sony to sell a console to PlayStation Five owners again. That's that's what this mm -hmm. is. It, and, and listen, because I know last week or the week before somebody said something, I'm not saying, man, you can't spend your money. You spend your money however you want. Like, y'all, if you want to buy this, go ahead and get it. I just, I, I will not. Like, it, it's not for me. No, like, I, I don't, I don't yeah, see We haven't it. maxed out the, what we got now. No, we haven't. And what I don't like about these pro consoles, and this happened last gen, um, is like people start kind of focusing on the pro consoles and they kind of ignore the older ones. Like the, the stuff doesn't run as well. Yep. And yep. it just, it spreads like, that's the only reason I don't like the S I thought the S was a cool entry, but people have to design around it. And like, it gets the least amount of attention. And now S is going to be like in the, in the fucking garbage can and PS five and series X are going to like series X is going to be the lower PS five is going to be even lower. And then, you know, the pro is going to be the, the one that they code for, which is just going to make all three of the other ones, which most people own, suffer. And I don't like that. Yeah. It happened that it happened last gen with the the PS5, the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Like, if you if you had one of those, you had a good experience. If you didn't, sometimes it was pretty bad. Like, I don't know. 
Uh, the PlayStation Plus Essential Games for April have been announced. Uh, it's Immortals of Avium, Minecraft Legends, haha, <laughs> LOL, uh, and Skull the Hero Slayer. So PlayStation continues to be the best place to play Xbox games. Let's go. Uh, release info. Uh, limited run games is scheduled to uh, publish a physical version of Grounded. Pre-orders have already begun. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail launches July 2nd. Uh, I Am 8-Bit announced a physical Ultra Deluxe Edition for the Stanley Parable. Uh, normal retail version uh, for PS5 Switch is coming to international retailers on July 19th. V Rising crossover with Legacy of Castlevania launches May 8th. Sunsoft is back. Retro game selection launches on Switch and Steam this April. Uh, what what games are on that? Uh, I don't remember, but it is only Japan. That is that is a note here. Well, then fuck. Yeah. Um, the Crew Motorfest is coming to Steam on April eighteenth. I thought it was our. Oh no, that's right. Ubisoft has their own. Yeah. Launcher and storefront. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, Cassette Beasts multiplayer update launches May 20th. Uh, Ilphonic has taken over the publishing rights for Predator Hunting Grounds and is bringing it to Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 later this year. Oh, that's why. Okay. Because I didn't look into that. Like, I saw that. I think I even posted it. But, like, I, I was like, I thought that was published by sony that's why they took over the publishing mm -hmm. that's why it's coming to xbox yep because everybody's like Ooh, sony putting your games on xbox no they're not so, yeah yeah y'all need to jim cat you need to stop okay all you jim cats out Don't. there need to stop all of them uh no man's sky orbital update was launched this week because you know we just need more no Man's Sky updates. Holy shit. Uh, uh, Tekken 8 Eddie Gordo is releasing April 4th. And then Minecraft okay. is getting a PS5 native version. Which is always cool. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive Season 4 was announced. The Last Fighter of Season 3 Slayer launches May. Yoshi P said it's a secret why there are so many Final Fantasy IX references in Dawn Trail. Uh, also, rumors floating around about a Final Fantasy IX remake, uh, which is also supposedly coming to Xbox, which is crazy. Yoshi P also teases Final Fantasy XVI uh, after the PC port that they're going to release to other consoles, which is like, I mean, there's only one console left you can port it to because it ain't going on Switch. Yeah, I mean, right. Even the Switch 2. It ain't gonna be on the Switch 2. So. Uh, what do we got here? Um, so it looks like there's a rumor floating around that GTA 6 is gonna be early 2025, but production is falling behind, and management fears it's gonna be late 2025, or even 2026. And apparently this caused the Rockstar stock to drop, which was crazy. Dag. Um, Jesus. But then I'm sure that stock raised a little bit when Take Two bought Gearbox. I have to eat my words because I remember saying who would want to buy them, and I totally didn't even think about Take Two. Yeah, I, Take Two hasn't bought anybody in a long ass time, so I wouldn't have thought of them either. You know, of course they got a deal on it, right? Because didn't Embracer pay like 1.2 billion, and then. Take two, yeah, turn around yeah. and bought her for like four hundred and seventy million. <laughs> Bracer, the stupidest company. Yep. Uh, oh, we got some uh, delisting. A bunch of Tales games were delisted on PlayStation Three and Vita. In North America, that includes Tales of Symphonia Chronicles, Tales of Zelia One and Two, Tales of Grace F, and Tales of Hearts R. And then in Europe, it's Tales of Graces F. Tales of Zestiria, Tales of Hearts R, Tales of Zelia 1, and Tales of Symphonia. Um, 
So according to the devs of Slay the Spire and Darkest Dungeon, Game Pass and Epic exclusive deals have dried up for indie devs. I mean, this this is going to happen at some point. Like, they can't keep giving big bags of money for content yeah. because we saw what happened with Netflix with that. Like, they, <laughs> they went, like, way in the red. So... Subscription services for gaming is getting weird. I'm not going to lie. Because it's not something that you can really... Um... I don't know. It's a bit different when, like, you're streaming stuff, right? Like, I guess it kind of makes sense because, like, you don't store anything. You just stream a movie. You just stream music. I mean, you're still um, storing you it. To... You got you to gotta serve it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I understand that. But, like, what I'm saying is, is that, like, it, they have full control. But at the same time, like, video games, you don't because, like, generally, you still have to download and then, you know, the person has that data accessible Mm -hmm. so it's harder like it's still probably the same ease to pirate stuff i think like i I don't see the benefit in in having a streaming service in general or not streaming service like a game service in general because like yeah game pass is great in theory but they don't put out enough first party stuff to make it worthwhile and I think that's maybe why they're they're starting to push back is because that that is finally going to start happening with like Hellblade, like that's going to start the run of like what is it like every three months there's going to be a big first party game dropping on the service because we've got Hellblade and then I know we got Indiana Jones. What's the one in between that? I forget. Um, oh, I forget what that. Yeah, it was at the show. I don't remember. But like there's th- there's three games coming out over the next 9 months. So like now they've got that first party cadence. So maybe they they kind of cuz we haven't seen a ton of like day one releases in the Game Pass like we did the last couple of years for like third party games. It's mostly like old content which works for most people. Like Netflix lives off of that. Like when they get stuff like Friends or or like some of the old HBO stuff, you know, like it, it's a boon for them because it's it's popular content. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. We're we're in that phase of Game Pass now, I guess. Where like what was it? Control just came back to Game Pass, and like oh, there was something else, yeah, some other big I'm just, game. I'm just in a weird place, anyways, with all that stuff. Where like I don't really subscribe to any streaming services. Or, or services that hold media back from mm-hmm. me. So it's one of those, I, I don't know how to feel about it anymore, because like, as it's kind of dried up, I've been not touching my Xbox as much. Yeah, 100%. Like, I keep Game Pass because I haven't paid for it in a while, and, but like, most of the games on there I own. Uh, and also, like, my son uses it. So like, that's big for him. Like, just to play some games that... Because we got three Xboxes in the house, and it's kind of a mess. Where, like, I share one account with one of them, so they have access to all my games, but the other one doesn't. So, like, Game Pass works on that console kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, I got you. Just give me the fucking family plan at some point. I'm getting tired of waiting on it. <laughs> I wish they would, because, yeah, my situation is like yours. So, you know, I can't share with mine around everybody so it's shared to one xbox until another one it's just the most like i don't know why they scrapped that family plan like jesus yeah i don't know the playstation one is funky because like if i set i can't set myself to auto log in anymore because if i no. do yeah, you can't. it logs in logs him into my account whenever he boots up so now i have to manually log into my ps5 every time i turn it on it's a pain in the ass mm-hmm uh, what else we got here? Overwatch two devs received no profit share bonus this month. Um, I guess Activision's gonna look into it. Uh, also, they they don't plan to finish the PVE content, and they're doubling down on PVP. Fix your goddamn matchmaking. That's wild, man. We ain't get our cut. Oh, also, we're not gonna do this. We're not gonna do this. Just so you guys know. Uh, okay, but you ain't get your money though. But you're gonna run us up and tell us what you didn't get. Hi, yeah. it's cool. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm so fucking tired of that game's matchmaking. It's so bad. I got stuck in a game last night 
with a grandmaster on the other team, and they just ran fucking Ilari and just fucking one shot at everybody, just like murdering everybody. Like this is so fun. I'm so glad yeah, you're I, in this I don't, game. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't miss it. Like I'm I'm in a diamond game and just fucking grandmaster over here just one shotting everybody. Like this is so fun. So fun. Yeah, the Dragon's Dog with two update is out now on PS5 and PC, but not Xbox. Uh, the options are you can switch off ray tracing. You can set the FPS at max 30 frames per second. You can change the number of art of metamorphosis to 99, whatever that means. You can finally turn off motion blur. Thank Jesus. I don't know why this shit's not just standard, man. Standard? Like, yeah, like, you had to do a patch to do it. Like, why don't we just ship it with this? Who the fuck plays with motion blur on? Like, I know, like, the uppity bitches know. play with it, but, like, I can't stand it. Like, I hate the way motion blur looks. Me too. That's usually the first setting that I turn off. Everybody's and, like, oh, it makes the world look cool. Me as well. Yeah, like, that, I turn that off. I turn on chromatic aberration off whenever that's on. I'm like, I don't, why are you... And who... Okay, I have a better one than motion blur. Who the fuck likes to play with film grain on? Mm, man. And then some games put that film grain, like, on max, too. And it's like, well, what the fuck? What? I'm not playing a noir freaking thriller. Like, what, what are we yeah, doing? Like, what the hell is this? Like... Mass effect. Mass Effect had it all yeah. bad, dude. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I remember before discovering I could turn it off, like playing through this game, I was like, this game kind of looks like shit. What is wrong with this game? Mm-hmm. Drop that yeah. in. It's more like Ass Effect. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, no, I, I remember that being the first game that I played that had it, and I was like, oh, no, that's coming off right yeah. now. Yeah, like, I don't, like, who thinks that is good? Like, who? I think, I think there's, like, because I think it's on in Yakuza Kiwami 2, and I don't notice it too much. There'll be like certain sequences where I'm like, oh, I think there's a film grain. And then it's like, okay, I'm not really worried about it. It's not bothering me too much. Um, but yeah, I there's a couple of games, but Mass Effect, I think, is the worst. Yeah, I, Mass Effect sticks out of my head like big time. I remember... Like playing yeah. it and seeing it, and I was like, "This just looks awful." Like I do not know, I do not know why people enjoy that at all. Um, bunch of layoffs. Uh, Sega, uh, 150 workers at uh, Sega. Oh, so sorry. This is uh, Sega's workers ratify the union contract. Around 150 workers of Sega of America will receive annual pay increases, notifications ahead of layoffs, and additional benefits. Uh, this is the first time for a major gaming company. Uh, Embracer CEO Lars Wingfords told investors he believes it's too early for Embracer to start considering studio acquisitions again. Huh? How about right? you don't? How about you just don't? <laughs> right. Like, I, just pump your brakes. Like, Jesus. Fucking stick to growing the easy shit, you know? Because, like, you clearly couldn't handle big time stuff. Man. Like, you know, you have a bunch of properties. Put out some remasters. There. Done. Man, remasters are like easy cash right now. Mm-hmm. People, people love that nostalgia. They love like... You, it's like the thing is, is like it's a huge ROI. Like it's not hard to produce them as much as it is building a yes. new yep. game. They, they, do they still own the Saints Row license? Mm. Or was that transferred to Gearbox? Oh, man, I do not know the answer to that question. Because here's the thing. Um, I know that the person that was working on it passed away. Um, but uh, remaster Saints Row 2. God damn it. Just make a trilogy it's pack. The... Truly. Uh, I mean, sure. Cool I, I would love that too. But like, I, 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 dead honest, like that is one of the best open world games and it is stuck on that generation. You can't even play it on PC because the PC version's forked. I mean, I need to get on the phone with my dudes at Sega. Maybe it's maybe it's like Bernie Stolar and be like, hey yo, where's my Eternal Champions remaster? I need that now. Lord <laughs> have mercy. You're, baby at least, you're at least getting something with Eternal Champions. I you just, say that, right. but like I ain't seen no inklings and the last I heard, there's a guy on Twitter that worked on that game that I've chatted with personally 
And he says the rights for that game and the code for that game are so fucked up that that's why there's never been like any. Well, you of won't it. get a new, you won't get a remaster. You'd have to get a new game. Yeah, I take either. But the guy that worked on the original doesn't even work in games anymore. I don't think. Probably not. I mean, uh, if you want to see like someone just signing deals and not understanding the implications, it's Sega in the nineties. Yeah. Um. Because, like, Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam and Earl is not owned by Sega. No, it's just, it's, that one company made that um, downloadable game recently. The new one, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, because I can't remember. It was the guy that worked, one of the guys that worked on it originally, I think. Um, and it was Macaulay Culkin's pu- uh, company that published it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's just, like, there's a reason why Sega doesn't have Wonder Boy. Like oh, they yeah. did not sign good contracts. Like, there's a story I don't. I, I've only ever heard it, so obviously I can't confirm it. But um, that the Sonic Spinball release party was going on, and they had they were like in the party, and they realized, oh my god, we cannot use the Sonic theme. <laughs> wow. Which is why you have that shitty ba 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 uh, intro of music, um, because they literally had to change it last minute. Sega is wild in the '90s, man. Yeah. So, like, here, fun fact: Do you remember, like if you remember the soundtracks to uh, Sonic One and Two? Those are owned by Mas- uh, Masato Nakamura, the the composer. They are not owned by Sega. That is, every time that you hear the Sonic theme. Like the original Sonic theme, they have to pay him. I mean, that's just smart on his part. You know? It is, said, but hey, it's just go him. And I mean, and he had a pop career in Japan, so it wasn't like they were hiring a nobody to write the music. Like he had a career in music. Um, there, there might have been but... a popular pop artist that worked on the third game. Uh huh. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> and then his <laughs> some his little known popular... indie indie musician you might have heard of. His, his, his yeah. also his popular sister. Um, also an independent musician, uh, ended up sampling the Bridge Zone theme from uh, <laughs> Sonic One, the on the uh, Master System and Game Gear, uh, written by Yuzo Koshiro in the song um, uh, "Together Again." <laughs> I swear to God. What's crazy is like Yuzo Koshiro is like a pimp. Like very rarely do you see a game that like. In the like on the title screen, music by, and then his just names is fucking but like Streets of Rage just literally says music by Yuzo Koshiro. Yeah, this game's gonna slap. That's right. <laughs> that motherfucker could do some jams, man. His his and he owned the company that Ancient that made the uh, Game Gear Sonic, and it's like that's a pretty good fucking game. <laughs> yeah, it's very different, but it's it's very good. Um. God, how did I bring us down this pathway? Oh my god. Started with remasters. That's, that's where we're Embracer kicked uh, off this conversation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just ownership of, of license. I'd be curious to know who owns Saints Row. Yeah, I don't know at this point, because didn't Volition get like thrown away? Volition Yeah. And then But like... Volition was thrown to um Gearbox before they were thrown away. Yeah, so where does the Saints Row IP sit? I don't think I, that was I even mentioned in this because Take Two got Borderlands and s- like two other games, and Embracer kept some stuff, but I never saw Saints Row mentioned in that at all. So I do not know who owns Saints Row right now, which is crazy. Um, Smilegate Barcelona is reportedly shutting down and laying off all employees. I. Uh, who are they? I, I I don't know. Oh, okay. That's, that's all I got. I okay, do know I who you. this I next just... company is. Sega has sold Relic Entertainment, uh, which will transition to an independent studio. Sega also cut 240 jobs in the Europe across Creative Assembly, Hardlight, and Sega Europe. You do know who Smilegate is. Smilegate is the oh, company Smilegate. behind... Yeah, go ahead. By, uh, behind world hit crossfire 
But is yeah. it, is that the Barcelona team or is that No, I don't think the Barcelona team had made anything. Okay. Uh, but, it, here... but it's hard to tell because <clears throat> they just put Smilegate Entertainment. Yeah. So uh, Gearbox laid off some employees after the acquisition by Take Two. Uh, this has affected PR workers, marketing, user research, and other sectors of the company. Uh, Certain Affinity laid off 25 people. And then Pritanium Media is shutting down uh, Crop Circle Games and laid off all of its staff. There's your your weekly the, the, the gaming industry is not doing well report. <clears throat> uh, Jim Ryan, before he walked out the door this week, claimed that the PS2 had sold $160 million, uh, and not the previous $155 million, and people are, like, going bananas because, like, that's never been confirmed, and the only reason this conversation came up is because the Switch is so close to passing it mm. that, like, Sony never wants to give up the best-selling console of all time. And let's be fair. Let's be fair. The PS2 sold a lot because it was awesome. But it also sold an extra few because there might have been some hardware problems. <laughs> just, I'm just uh, throwing that out right. there. You mean the PS2? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Well, the PS2 was also a DVD player. Yes. Huge right. Trojan horse for that. It was yeah. huge. Yeah. It, cost, it cost less than... And that's the reason why PS3s ended up picking up uh, when they dropped in price because they were still the cheaper Blu-ray. than the Blu-ray yep. player. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I, have, the PS2 sold a lot because of a lot of good things, but there was also some hardware problems that they probably attributed to some of those sales. Just, I mean, well, to some extent, then Xbox 360 numbers. Oh, Xbox really 360 damaged. numbers are hugely inflated, like because of that Red Ring of Death crap, hundred percent. Um. I think there was another... The PlayStation 1 also is probably inflated quite a bit because not everybody knew you could flip it upside down, you know. What else we got here? I'm just looking through. Um, yeah, there's lots of conversation about this fucking... Uh, and, and don't fall for any news today and tomorrow. Just going to say that. Uh, I've already seen like a Waffle House stage in Tekken 8. Um, oh, that's right. April Fool. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's. They just announced a Power World dating sim. I don't know if that's real or not. I mean, they are ahead of us, but even then, I, I, a lot of the time, some of this stuff is. Um, a lot of the time, some of the time, fucking me. Okay. Anyway, some of this stuff is always like, haha. But actually, if though, would you buy? Yeah. Inti creates. Inti creates just announced. Um, <clears throat> Divine Dynamo Flame Frit, but nobody knows if it's actually real. It's a f- mobile game. That's the problem. Is like you don't want to announce games today and tomorrow, like because people right. are gonna be like, "Is this real?" Like, huh? You just you just playing? Uh, all right. Uh, up, 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 up. Got some tweets. I'll, let me check the email real quick. I didn't see any earlier. Let's just double check it, just in case. There's the sound. My inbox always has emails, just not always with podcast emails. Nope, 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 nothing yet. Okay. Uh, Tweets coming in. Shogun says, Steam and Epic Game Launchers might be coming to Xbox. Yeah, we didn't talk about this, did we? Um, No, we didn't. This could be a pretty big game changer, pun intended. I wonder, will this basically mean that Xbox is an app for PC and the rumors were true, but just short-sighted turning the Xbox into a game station means mom was right? <laughs> I would love this. I would love this. Yeah, if you got a Steam app on the Xbox, that would be fucking crazy, right? Yeah, that that would be awesome. Like, I hope that they do do that. Could you imagine, like... Like, you can buy, like, all these $2 games and play them on your Xbox just natively. That'd be wild. I don't know, man. Phil wants it. And at this point, Xbox is just like a fucking... It's just a, it's just a name, you know? Mm-hmm. 
So you can play Xbox on your phone, your PC, your TV, your console. Pretty soon you'll be able to play it on your refrigerator, your your washing machine, your Tesla. Shit, you probably could do that now. I think you can play some stuff, but I don't know if you can play Xbox yet. Oh, okay. I know it has like that. Um, you know, it might be Steam stuff because I saw someone playing like The Witcher or something on there. Like it links to some uh, game service. I'm be honest. When I had a Samsung TV and I tried that built-in cloud app, it worked yeah, well really enough. Mm. Like it worked. I, I don't know, man crazy he says also happy easter currently playing the lamplighters league god i forgot about that game oh me too yeah i wanted to play that uh he says it's not a bad game uh 1940s hp lovecraft xcom i really dig it and you can regain action points like gears tactics god i forgot about gears tactics too holy shit i was good i like gears tactics it's crazy man there, that's the problem with today's games there are too many video games yep I forget half of them that came out. And Jeremy writes in and says, I'm probably about 30 hours into Dragon's Dogma 2. Man, I'm having a blast. Just got my sorcery skill maxed out. Now I think I'll jump to a melee class next. Mystic Spear Hand looks like fun. Anyone still playing? If so, what's your favorite class so far? I, I think I'm the only one on the show that's played it. And I've kind of taken a break until that patch comes out. I know he's playing on PS5, so he got the patch. But I don't have the patch oh. yet. Um, I right before I quit, I just I started as a as a fighter, and I just bought um, the sorcerer vocation, and fucking video games. As soon as I did that, it gives me like an outfit and a staff. And guess what happened? I got over encumbered, <laughs> and I got pissed That's and I turned it, it off. Yeah, I got pissed and I turned it off. I was like, God damn it! I gotta go manage my inventory. I spend more time managing my inventory than I do anything else in that game because my, my fucking pawns are always running around picking up shit. And they're like, oh, I found this Arisen. And I swear to God, if they what tell me... Like, I swear to God, if they, if they tell me about one more goddamn ladder, I'm going to throw one of them into the brine. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, they are very talkative. Like, in the first one, they were very talkative. I, I do love... When you finish a battle now, like two of my pawns will like slap five, which is hilarious. Oh, nice! It's, it's they yeah, like do awesome. it in slow motion too. They like walk towards each other and they're like, Whoop. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get it on sale because I just nah, I, I like that game. I do. I just like man, some of the stuff pissed the fast travel pisses me off. The encumbrance pisses me off. Like, the stupid AI pisses me off. But I'll be goddamn if I don't want to, like, run around that world and, like, throw goblins over cliffs and fight ogres and ride on the back of griffins. Like, that shit is cool. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. That's it. That's all I got. It's all the news. It's all the, it's all the video games. I finished um, Three Body Problem on Netflix. Oh, I actually am about to start that. Was it good? It's good, but you better hope they make more. Okay, it's one of those. Because gotcha. it kind of doesn't even get started. <laughs> it's uh, like, do you even know what it's about? Like, yeah, yeah, I, I I haven't read the book, but I yeah, I've read like a synopsis or stuff. Yeah, like they literally don't even get to the thing at the end of the first season. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Like you figure out what's going on by the end of the first season, but like what's going to happen is like three to four hundred years away. <laughs> All righty. Yeah. I was like, I got to the, the eighth episode. I was like, we're not going to get there, are we? We're, we're not going to, we're not going to see it. And and then watch and then it's on Netflix and Netflix is bad about canceling stuff after one season. Like Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what season two is going to be like because we didn't even like we didn't even go in the future at all. 
Like, we, we just, where we started. Hmm. And, like, and I heard, like, the books are, like, three parts. So, like, maybe they do, like, three seasons, which would wrap it all that up. That could be. But, if yeah, it, like you said, I, like, yeah, it's Netflix, that. though, so... They're, they're worse than Fox canceling shit, I'm gonna tell you. They definitely are. God! So, I hope it Because the show could be good for them. Like, it get good ratings, and Netflix is like, not canceled. We're done. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop got slammed, like, almost immediately after it ran. Like, so many shows on that service get get destroyed before they, that's why I normally don't like I didn't know this was gonna be a multi part thing. I thought it was just gonna be like a one and done. I thought it was too actually. And then nope, it's definitely not. I think the last line of the show was like, let's go, we got work to do. I'm like, fuck. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I hope it don't get cancelled then. Yeah, I'm gonna be pissed because 'cause I'm like kind of invested in the story now. I was like, I wanna see how this pans out. Oh, and I keep trying to watch Oppenheimer, and I think I've made it a total of 15 minutes into that movie, and I'm just like, man, I need three more hours to finish this. <laughs> uh, you better yeah, I can't I'm do, not even going to try. I can't do long, long movies anymore. It's funny, because I can't do a long movie without, like, really dedicating to it, but, like, if you give me a TV show, like, I can watch three or four episodes. If if I'm not doing anything else, you know, which makes no because sense. Episode, well, no, because episodes have conclusions. I, I mean, fair, but like movies have acts. I could like stop after the first act, I guess. Yeah, it's not the same. Except for Christopher Nolan movies. Christopher Nolan movies don't have acts. They just have like this fucking long ass story. Mm-hmm. Like there's Pointing no how bullets go backwards or some shit. Yeah, dude, I watched and in... well, it's not it's... Tenet. Tenet is the one. Tenet. And like I watched that and I'm like, this movie is like, did you get it? No, you didn't. Ha ha ha. You're stupid. Wow, I haven't seen it. Like I wanted to see it, but then I started hearing the. I already half like Christopher Nolan as it is. Um, but like, and then I started hearing people kind of describe what you're saying and I was like, oh, okay, well, fuck this movie. So I, I've never actually seen it. Dude, I, I tried to follow what's going on in that movie. And by the end of it, I'm like, I have no fucking clue what happened. Gotcha. And the movie's like, what? Well, you don't understand? Like, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm old. I need you. Sometimes I need you to put like a big arrow on the screen. It's like, get it? Like. Right, so, and that's real talk. Sometimes that's yeah. Like I, I envy people. Like actually, I don't envy people who like as soon as they start a movie, they're like, I know what's gonna happen, and they're right. Because like, how do you enjoy a movie like that? Yeah. Okay, I can. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm so that's, glad. That... I'm so glad. Like when I start watching a movie, I was like, Oh shit, I didn't see that coming. And like the person sitting next like, to me is like, I totally seen that coming. People, people, people got upset with me, and I know I keep bringing up it's my first review. Shut up! But like, I saw the end of a way out coming. There's a moment, there's a moment where we go and meet their families, and as soon as I saw that we met the second family, I turned to my friend. I paused the game. I turned to my friend and went, "They're gonna betray each other." <laughs> okay. He's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, no, man. I'm like, we're gonna have to fight each other at the end. And <laughs> so, is right. anyone? Is everybody here seen Shutter Island? I know it's old enough. I can spoil it. Yes. Yes. I okay. Like that movie. I sat down with my wife to watch it. Five minutes into it, she's like, "DiCaprio's fucking the one that's crazy." <laughs> yep. Yeah. That. See, I I <laughs> called that too when it first came out. I watched it with my well now ex wife, but yeah, I'm 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 like that. Like my kids hate watching movies and different shows with me, like Law and Order stuff, because I'm like, mm, that nigga did it. Like, I don't know how, but that, yep, watch. And then stuff will start unfolding as I was like, and they're like, man, just stop talking. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's a gift and a curse. See, that's why, <laughs> that's why I enjoy, I think that's why I enjoy movies more than you guys do, like even bad movies, because I'm like, I'm it so is. oblivious to it. Like, I don't even think about it. I'm like, like, I'll notice yeah. stuff happening. Like, my son and I watched that alien movie on Hulu. I forget what it's called. But like, as we're watching the movie, like, I, I would start to notice, like, she never talks. There's no dialogue in that movie. 
And like my son didn't wow. even like it didn't even register with him. And when we got to the end of the movie, I was like, Did you notice she said one line in that entire movie? One line. And he's like, I didn't even notice that while we were watching. I was like, Yep. I'll notice things, but like I don't I don't figure out things before they happen. So I guess that's why I enjoy movies a little better. I I'm thinking it is, because yeah, I, I honestly can't tell you the last time that I was surprised at a at a movie's like plot twist or you know who done it or whatever like i i feel like when 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 they do surprise me they have to work really hard i'm like damn okay i give them all the all the credit but like <laughs> it's just with different camera angles and shit like you can tell when different stuff happens like different i don't know it's i don't know I... see that, that's why it's fun to watch a movie like watching the sixth sense the second time was so much more fun cuz like you know what happened mm. Mm. So like you can catch I, all the little things. I think that's part of the reason why I liked um, uh, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk so much was the story was so uniquely original. <laughs> I could not see it coming. Like I I try like um, I was thinking about Death Stranding and how oh, I had yeah. sort of pulled pieces out of that early on. I think earlier than they expected you to. And I was messaging Ken because Ken had already played it, um, trying to see if I could figure it out early. <laughs> and I, I did for some of it. Yes. But I don't know. I just, I think it's funny. You're better than me. That game is wild as fuck. I wasn't even trying to figure it out. Like, everything has surprised me in that. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, okay. Oh, oh my god. The, the nigga that keeps falling asleep and all that. I'm like, oh my god. Like that. Anyway, that's a good. I need to finish that game. I st- I still remember the last movie that shocked a lot of people that that normally are like you guys where they know what's going to happen and it was shocking in the fact of how bad it was because nobody could have come up with something that stupid which was the village. Oh, yep. Oh <laughs> god. That all his me movies, off. all his <laughs> movies. Dude, he took okay, ah, uh, now I have to. He took the idea that like Bruce Willis's invincible character. His weakness is water. He's not weak because of water. It's just that he could drown. That was the whole point. He could drown still. He's still a man who has to breathe. So, so what does that idiot do? He like has Bruce Willis's character in glass be like sprayed with water to make him weak. It's like you motherfucker. Yeah, he didn't even. Yeah. You watch your own movie. He everything he does has to be like I'm so smart. I'm so many fucking steps ahead of everybody else. And it's like, yeah, but show your work. <laughs> show your work. I was good. I was I was very oh. disappointed in how Glass ended because he, he just drowned him in a little yeah. puddle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was lame, man. Because he's oh. weak. He's weak to water now. Well, Instead it's because just... it was it was such a big thing at the. And I'm sorry if I'm spoiling these fucking decade old movies at this don't, point. Hold on, hold on, don't watch them. Remember how that talk at the beginning where we talked about spoil? We don't want you to oh, watch yeah, these. these not okay. You don't have to watch them. I watch like them. these watch, movies. Leave them alone. Watch, 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 watch Unbreakable, and then watch Split, and that's where those movies end. Yeah, at yeah, the end of Split, when when Bruce Willis turns around in the diner, I about lost my shit. I'm not gonna lie. That was cool. I did too. Yeah. Like, yeah. But Glass... That and I was like, oh, that's... Glass was bad. Glass was a bad movie. I'm sorry. Yeah. But most of his movies are bad. Lady in the Water. Lady in the Water is not a great movie. Lady now, Signs... Signs is one of the best movies ever made. I will not take any slander. What's, what's the... Yeah, but, but Signs, he's not trying to do this big old... I still need to watch that. His twist is whoa, 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 whoa. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I've not, I've never seen Signs, um, and I think, I, I think I've already been spoiled for me, and that's why I haven't yeah, had the drive. It, to go it's see not about it. the spoilers in that movie. It's really it, not. It's a, oh, okay, okay, it's about okay. The, it's about the atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere okay. in that movie is one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen but, in my life. He, he then okay. saw that okay. people liked that movie, and he they liked um. Uh, Sixth Sense, and it was like twists have to be in all my movies, except that that is not the joy of signs. No, not at all. The twist in that movie, the twist in that movie is so like it's fine, it's fine, but it's not like Sixth Sense. 
Yeah. Okay. It it just it just is what it is. Like they do the There's whole that... like there are people who do movie. this. Like that scene with with Mel Gibson towards the end where he's talking to Joaquin Phoenix. He's like, there are these people and there are those people, and like it all comes together at the end. But like that's not what the movie. That's not what makes that movie great. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it because it's funny. My wife has seen it. She don't even watch movies. She's like, I haven't even seen that. But yeah, I just because I felt like you know, like you said, that his stuff was always about the the twist. Dude, the twist. I saw I'm that. Like, I already know. So I saw that movie in the theater with Brian and Tracy, and you can ask either one of them to this day. I screamed so loud in the theater at the cornfield scene. Wow. Okay. I thought about shit in my pants. It is fucking scared the piss out of me. But I have a, I have right. a phobia of aliens. Though. Like, it terrifies me, but I love, me? like, studying this shit. Like, the cornfield is not the one for me. Is it, the, the, is it the roof? The bathroom. Oh, the bathroom sucks, too. <laughs> the roof got me at the beginning when he's talking to his kid. Mm. And he looks out the window. Like, I lost my shit on that one, too. Fuck that movie is oh. What about one the, of the better alien movies? Yeah. What about the uh, the birthday party scene? That was pretty rough. I don't remember that one. Where Joaquin Phoenix is in the closet watching TV, and they have the footage of the birthday party in Mexico. I I, I it's been so long, man. I, oh. I can only remember what scarred me for life. God, that movie is oh terrifying. It just kills me you ain't seen it. I, I envy you that you haven't seen it, because, like, it's just so good. It's so good. It's his best movie. I'm, yeah. Sorry, I'm it's a pantry, I believe. Oh, yeah, when he locks him in the pantry, he's like, don't go in there, I locked one in the pantry. That yeah, is the I most mean... tense scene in the... F- oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. There's your movie minute. <laughs> All right. Um, Phoenix Down might be doing some intermissions without Drew for a while. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh yeah, I, I think we are. I think we still need to confirm that. But yeah, I think we're we are we are down to. I don't want to speak for you, Anthony, but I am down if you are to intermission for them. Yeah. Um, while they're on hiatus for in some capacity, yeah. Cool. So yeah, that that we may be having a different because I don't know when Drew's coming back. It's going to be a while. For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, if you want to send emails for this one, you send them to podcast at ztgd.com. You can still follow us on Twitter and tweet at us at uh, ZTGD Radio. But other than that, enjoy your holiday. It's over now that you're listening to this, but hopefully it was good. Otherwise, we'll get out of here. Peace, bitches. Alrighty. And it goes something like this. <laughs>